Morning, good afternoon, or whatever time it is. It is episode 87 of the Red Leaf Retrocast. I'm your host, JD, joined by Tori and Hickey as usual. How you guys doing today? Doing alright. Doing okay. Doing alright, okay. We got a fun episode today. We actually do have fall impressions to talk about. Each of us have three shows we're going to give our impressions over, and then our review, of course, by the title of the episode little late Halloween rendition, I suppose. Pet Shop of Horrors. It's a strange one, if I do say so myself. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's four episodes. It's about as I expected, I guess. Mm. Yeah, for a late 90s horror anime. Just to... Aimed at older women. Is it? I yep, guess. it's a Jose. Is it Jose? Oh, that would make sense. Makes more sense in hindsight now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's what we got on the docket today. Um, you know, ment- men- mentally wise, I guess I'm a, I'm a little depressed at the country I'm living in right now. The way things are going, it is the election. <sighs> it's uh, a topic. It's okay. Just buy a gun. Oh. <laughs> but but they're going to be taken. Oh, I won't even go there. Oh no, that's why you need a gun. <laughs> you see. <laughs> Also because you're white, so I think things Try will, will get Michael a little bit hard eggs. for you in the in the next couple of days or years. Nah, 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 nah. It'll be fine. It'll just be a civil war and everything will be daijoubu. Yeah. Daijoubu. Also, like, unrelated, you work making guns, so I think it, it, it you should get one. <laughs> just because, like, <laughs> if, if I make cars, I would like to have a car. Well, I don't physically make the gun. <laughs> well, but you're part of the process, so I think you I should... I am part of the process, You yeah. should get one, just because, like, well, this is what I helped you build. A sense of accomplishment. I guess, I guess morally what I what I do for a living doesn't uh, <laughs> coincide with my beliefs. No, nah, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't have morals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what do you mean? Moral? No. <laughs> that is funny. Dude, yeah, look. It doesn't matter. Okay? At the end, it doesn't matter. What matters is your safety. And please don't don't crush your economy. Uh, because if you crash your economy, you're crashing my economy. And uh, depending on how things go, I might, I might have to fight to protect trees. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, or like being bribed... So, uh, shit will become very, very weird, but I don't. I'm not thinking about that. I think about yeah, corpses just a lot of, <laughs> yeah, of just a lot of things on everyone's mind these days. But at least we got anime to kind of steer our mentality towards, uh, I guess, anger or or <laughs> enjoyment towards something else. So I was definitely in a mood for for something or another, and that's what we got here. Uh, video game wise, anybody got an update? Nope. How about anime outside of podcast stuff? Any update? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's been well. I mean, being Tori, you're preparing to play the new season of Apex. So that's right. That's ah, see, that's be, a video game yeah, update. It's going to be I, fun. I guess. It, yeah, it, it might be. Could be. Could we'll be see. fun. Yeah. Uh, there's they the... released a. Uh, a new ma- map and a new character. I can almost unlock the new character. I 
I've already played the new map a little bit. It's a lot of fun. It's it's something different. They're uh, removing the oldest map in the game from rotation as well. So uh, yeah, no, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. Have a goal of uh, reaching uh, gold ranked again, as I did last split of the last season. So I'm improving. We're we're getting better, both of us. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that. I made the mistake of keeping us in general chat. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Oh boy. There we go. Now we're good. Don't want to be in the general chat as we're recording. That would be. I mean, we've done that quite a few times. Before. We have yeah. done that before. People <laughs> hop in. It, it, it is kind of funny. <laughs> Although, I mean, if they want to listen to us record, I don't see a reason to. I mean, not let them jump in. Although we're not fun. I guess that was established a long time ago. That's okay. What That's... do you mean we're not fun? All of our tens of listeners are totally into it. By the way, the election has really taken a toll on our download numbers. Of course it has. Man. Listen, man, I'm sorry. Like, it's but... almost like people are interested in something else. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm just saying, right? I don't really care about U.S. politics as much as I probably should because it does actually affect me, kind of. However, it's it affects more the global economy, but that's that's that that is what it is. Like, I just fucking sat down. I went to bed. I'm laying in bed with my laptop like I always do because I can never just go to bed or go to sleep rather. Mm-hmm. So I'm mm-hmm. just laying there and I'm like, as I'm going to bed, I'm like, you know what? Let me just see what's going on in the fucking uh, oh, election no. right now. Let me go well, to my let me go to my local news station to see what's happening. And I just tune into the live feed and they're just fucking talking and everything and i'm just sitting there and shit's happening just exciting they have people on that i fucking like listening to normally and i'm just like okay it's suddenly two hours have passed i'm like well yeah i was supposed to go to bed wasn't i <laughs> you aren't the only one i mean uh wednesday morning i swear like half the building i work at people are hung over because it became like a drinking party yep. uh they knew nothing was coming in we have we have the the president of the United States coming on all you know we knew it was happening but he's coming on calling fraud and mm-hmm. conspiracies. Shock uh, he's horror. kicking he's he's ki- yeah shock horror kicking. Man, you mean that must be the first time in a U.S. election that somebody has said that it's either rigged or fraudulent or man yeah, that's never he said happened it, before. He said it last he said it last time but he won and then he's like bah, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> So then this time he's he's going out, uh, top that on with he's calling for his supporters to also go along with it. So he's he's literally, ma- he's he's gathering people together to go against democracy. It's very depressing. Uh, yeah, that is what it is. It's yeah, not, it, though. It, 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 I mean, that's clearly not, it's, that's, No, I mean, it's not. It is democracy. It's not is what it is. <laughs> no, he it has... No, it is no, no. because Look, he's JD, this convincing is the beauty, people to do this it. Is I hate that phrase so democracy. much. Because you can say whatever the fuck you want. That's democracy. So This shouldn't be something oh, that the so president you don't should like? be calling for. It is what it is. It is democracy. No, it's not. Democracy is not a good thing. We should all uh, support monarchy. But... Well... You that, know, that's that's what he's trying to get across. Hey, God, Emperor Trump. It's uh, democracy. Anyways. Democracy dies anyway, by the hand of democracies. Nice. Let's talk about something nice. Uh, the Discord of the Red Leaf Retrocast has started a learning Korean. Uh, I saw section. that. I, I saw that. I was a little bit confused. <laughs> Same. I was like, I was like <laughs> wait, like, hold, on, hold on. on. That's the problem of working like crazy, not having pauses to check anything. And <laughs> basically come home, pass out, wake up this, the other day and go to work because things change very hard, rapidly. And now there is a learn Korean <laughs> channel in the Discord. It's Yeah, it's, a, it's there's um, our fan base and the people that are in the Discord has uh, we've all kind of come together and we're all going to help each other out learning the Korean language and culture. Uh, we just started our first lessons uh, today upon recording, so if you're listening you want you want to be a part of a community that's helping each other out and learning a language, uh, there you go. Uh, Korean just happened to be what everyone just kind of slowly, I guess, gathered around would be the term to put. Uh, started with the alphabet, it's going to be a twice a week thing. Thursday, uh, this is all in United States Eastern Standard Time, uh, Thursday nights, 6.30, Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. Uh, Saturdays are going to be the new lessons, Thursdays are going to be kind of the refresher courses, 
and as things get put together, uh, it's it's a big group effort where we're uh, we're testing each other, helping each other out with pronunciation. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of fun learning experience going on there. So if you're interested, just contact uh, us on Twitter at BowlingJD, Redly Retrocast, and uh, we'll get you a Discord invite to learn Korean. We can we're more than willing to help each other out and we're going from there. So again, first lesson was today. It was a rousing success. Got everything going on in, in digital format, so it's a it's a big sharing effort as well. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? You guys interested at all, or kind of just going to stay out of it? You got enough things going on. I have more than enough things going on right now. I yeah. fucking I still yeah, have you're the in, you're in school. <laughs> I am. I still have the fucking uh, course material that Hickey sent me for Japanese, and I haven't even looked at it because I don't that have fucking true. time. <laughs> I'm just waiting uh, my vacation so I can resume studying more Japanese. That's basically it. I'm just reading, I guess. I'm still reading about advanced grammar because it's fun. Mm. Uh, what a nerd. That's that's about it. Linguistics. Linguistics yeah. are fun. I need to go back and remembering Latin. <laughs> Well, it's funny because all of us here, just in the anime, I should learn podcast, German as we, well. We but, each yeah. at least speak two two languages a piece. <laughs> I be like that sometimes. Yeah. I'm so, also Hickey, Hickey with his with his English and his Portuguese, <laughs> and his German and his po- Japanese po- and his fucking Latin and his French and his yeah. What else? Yeah, we got a lot of languages. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I I need so. to learn German next. Or else my one of these my, days, my Hickey's academy, gonna come in and be like, my one of these days, Hickey's my gonna be come in and be like, I spent very, the last week hard. learning Indonesian, so you know that's no that that language <laughs> is like I can't, I can't. That that is, uh, it feels like I just need to invent sounds and people will understand. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Indonesians. It's just that how it is nowadays. I cannot. I'm because, not trying. Because, <laughs> yeah, because don't be YouTubers, disrespectful to our less than one percent audience. That's because right. Of, because <laughs> of Indonesian VTubers, I understand there's a logic behind the 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 language, and I can start to pick up the grammar kind of structure phrase uh, phrasal structure of the language. But uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Now I need to focus on Latin, and then. German, because I won't be able to advance for my master degree if I don't know German. I don't think I can rely again for the first second time, <laughs> just like I did in graduation on uh, Google Translate to translate texts from the law text from. That's the pretty crazy that German. as a lawyer you have to learn a foreign language to go along with. You don't your need to. Path. You don't need to. If you want to, but it helps. Yeah, if you want to yeah. do like a ca- academic research, uh, especially in civil law countries mm-hmm. so even japan uh the japanese law i think it's hybrid it's been between a common law more civil law but also there's a, a few of uh common law things in the in the thing you need to know what french german yeah i think it's french uh, french and german if you are in brazil or like portugal you also need spanish because there's a lot of things from uh, that that come across from from Spain as well, and it, Italian, it's less, but it always help. So, for example, I like constitutional law, and most of constitutional law comes from German and Austria. So I need to understand German, <laughs> although I don't. <laughs> I just use a Google That's Translate. Super inter- interesting. Yeah, to... so you gotta learn. You gotta learn the whole. Uh, uh... Not Bundesliga, just the 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 Bund the the Bundestag uh, constitution and yeah, all that. yeah 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 especially yeah. like when it comes to to the Weimar Republic as well the the things that happened there you need mm-hmm. to understand those it's like uh, there's a bunch of weird as definitions law definitions that is just yeah, one the, word uh, when I when I was a, when I was over there and happening. and in uh in kind of like this democracy learning class. Uh, this is when I was in college over there. We had to learn a bunch of the different uh, Bundeshats and what they stand for. What it's it's almost like learning different uh, state legislations. If we're comparing to the United States and how each state can have their own laws, it's of course very much similar in Germany and 
Uh, of course, it's much, much older. <laughs> That's an understatement. Uh, there are certain laws that have existed longer than the, con- the country I'm from ex- has existed. So, okay. I think um, I think French yeah, still uses some Napoleon laws. I, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. They just me. modified a little bit. We also use them. We have the the commercial uh, codec codex. Yeah, it's from eighteen fifty seven. So Brazil was still an empire when that law passed, I believe. Oh, okay. And some, of course, most of it we don't use anymore. But some parts of it, especially for like international uh, trading, mm-hmm. we still use it. It's, effective so why why change i guess it's a little bit old but you know but yeah but like you need to learn languages i can go by from the french and and spanish i can i can deal with it but yeah i'm I'm very much the same way with french at this point i just kind of get by with it i don't uh have much interest in getting better at it uh i wonder i wonder if our listeners find this cultural aspect uh interesting at all <laughs> nah probably not <laughs> maybe not it's an anime podcast and we're talking about the <laughs> constitutional legislations of countries yeah. uh all stemmed from yes you can learn korean in the discord uh, it all it all stemmed because um as it turns out uh it, like slowly but surely realized that basically kind of half the discord are also k-pop fans i i knew it that was the first thing that struck me when i saw it and i'm like Right. I, I wonder why why Korean. Let me guess. Like everybody is into K-pop. Then I guess that's yeah. kind of what it. That, it I, was a that's kind of weird. what it, it stemmed from. Yeah. Because like I was like, why not Japanese? Because you guys watch a bunch of Japanese wrestling as well. Yeah. Yes, a lot of Japanese wrestling. So a lot like, of video why, games why come from Korean over there. Anime. But things. why Korean? Yeah, and it 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 really stemmed from K-pop. And I've always had this. Me personally, I've had just a more interest in learning the Korean language, just cause I I've heard it's easier, and it's more adaptive uh, to learning uh, other harder kind of script languages uh, like what it is, and it's different. I'm always up for different. Sounds kind of fucked up though. I couldn't lie. Like <laughs> Korean is weird. No, but like Korean is weird in the sense that like as an outsider listening to it, like it sounds fine and then there's just some of the like weirder words in korean that just like you hear them it's like whoa what was that it's like <laughs> it, it's like listening to chinese except chinese is like that all the time it was it you know when when yeah. uh so we did the alphabet this morning and uh as they were going f- as the uh the, the the youtube teacher as uh, we found a full-on lesson thing like you don't even need to spend money on any of this as long as you just know how to put things together and since i've gone through learning uh, different languages before I know how to kind of structure myself and help out others so she's going through the pronunciations all this and I'm like this sounds kind of like what Chinese would but the I guess the way it's all put together and uh, structure of it all seems more Japanese so it's almost like a hybrid of the two and I'm like okay this kind of is making more sense why it might be a little easier than others because you're not focusing on say Chinese or Japanese. I it's wonder just more why. Like a, yeah, I wonder <laughs> why it's kind of this weird simplistic version of it all. Aha! Like it all kind of dawned on me. It was like okay, yeah. So we learned we learned the Hangul, um, and then uh, as we were going over the alphabet and just kind of putting things together, seeing if we can uh, actually. Uh, memorize the letters and make a word out of it and then just the the teacher person kind of did the translation and it's really funny how italian words are literally the same you just sound it all out but it has the korean letters so lasagna <laughs> and pasta <laughs> it's pasta <laughs> so we all got a kick out of that that was funny so yeah learn korean join the discord it all help out we're only in, we're in the very very beginning stages of it all so uh, hopefully we can, um, we'll we'll see very quickly how many people are actually committed to this. So I know I am more than willing to do it. I've been meaning to do something like this for a while. And uh, at least one other person is, like he's already spent like $100 on doing it. He's wanted to do it for a long time yeah. uh, within the Discord. I would expect so like half of them to fucking like fade out after like a month. That's absolutely. Pretty- 
Yeah, you, you stop being goes. committed. The holidays come. Oh, I got to spend time, you know, doing this and that instead. I don't have time to do this. Well, that's not how school works. Where you just well, plenty of people, I guess, quit school uh, when they feel like it. They but do, but <laughs> it's get, it's a little bit different because at school, it's like you need you need to go. It's somewhere that you go. Like for it, it becomes like a thing, right? I, I know it's like that for me at this point, where it's like even if I don't, I can't physically go to school anymore because they have closed down the school, so we only have sure. online. Uh, online lessons right now, but it's literally just a case of like waking up, just getting ready, turning on PC, going to the site, just putting on lectures, getting fucking uh, or opening Word to take notes, take notes, listen, shut off, like do my stuff, eat lunch, whatever, get mm-hmm. ready, read some, go to next uh, next lesson, then just keep that up. And it's like it becomes like a habit. It's like even if I'm it's like I don't really want to go today, but then it's like yeah, you know what. That's before I know what I'm just sitting there. It's like ah, I guess I guess I did anyways. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a routine. Even me with the post graduation, I come home. I'm tired. I just want to sleep because my clients are very very weird and they come up with very very weird shit in their lives that I need to deal with. My corpse is a mission, uh, and I'm like well, but I need to study. So I sit down. <laughs> I put on the the lesson and I. I study. Of course, I'm paying for it, which is a huge, huge incentive to get going. The fact that I'm yes. spending money yes. on education and I need to Same. make it. Yeah, I need to make it count. <laughs> yeah, when when you have a financial backing behind it, you feel you f- do feel that incentive. Well, I I did spend money on this. If I do, if I don't do anything, then I just wasted that. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's. That's definitely the the big big thing. So we got at least one person that's that's done that. Uh, so, anyways, definitely. Also, try to find someone to speak to, even if you're alone. Like, speak to yourself. Uh, oh, really, sure. No, no, no. Really we're helps. we're all like tr- we're all speaking back to each other and encouraging. Yeah, yeah. But like, even yeah, find someone who actually speaks Korean. <laughs> well, that's that's the tough part. I live in the United States, and I don't know if you last checked. Not a lot of them speak a different language. <laughs> well, but go to Korea town. Well, yeah. or Spanish Chinatown. <laughs> but uh, you'll find. Wait, someone. did you say Chinatown? Uh, I don't yeah, know if I want to go to Chinatown. I've watched an anime recently, and there's some spooky no, shit that happens. Okay. There. You just, just it's don't buy okay. drugs. Chinatown or pets. <laughs> drugs or, or pet drugs. Drug pets. No, no drugs. No pets. No fortune cookies. You never know what where those have been. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and the, these days, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, I mean, uh, it's like, for, uh, you know, uh, just ignore soup. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's get into our fall impressions. As I play the drop that you guys can't hear, but the listeners can. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, fall 2020 impressions. This actually worked out better for me because I uh, don't ha- I don't pay for the premium anime services, so everything's free, and I always have to. I'm always delayed a week, so I actually got to watch the third episodes of a lot of these shows, uh, at least the ones I'm going to be reviewing. And I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but I have discovered. I'm probably much late to the party, but regardless, I've just discovered it. It's a new to me. Uh, anime streaming service. It is called Anime Lab. Have you guys heard of this? Uh, I- yeah. Wait, hold on. Anime Lab isn't that the uh, isn't that the Australian service? Yes, it is out of Australia and New Zealand. And uh, as long as you have a VPN, you can just uh, sign up for it, and it's totally free. And it has a lot of the Funimation type uh, uh, shows on there. Uh, if you yeah, want the dub they're... and everything, you would you would pay for the preview and service. But uh, mm. yeah, it um, has really short uh, thirty second commercials, only a couple of them, so it doesn't impede my viewing experience by any means. Uh, I think the sur- I think the 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 video is better than Crunchyroll. That's for sure. That's not I, hard to do. I was about to say it's like that's the same thing. I use Walk on him, and it's like. The, the player there is like, it's like fucking, I I almost, I want to compare it. Like, the player is literally like Netflix's player, even with like skip OP button and everything. 
OP right. and ending button. Like it's literal the same. It's like, it's like ever since I got to walk on him, I'm just like, how the hell did I ever watch stuff on fucking Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll oh is posting screenshots from their anime that they've just printed directly from the player. They look so fucking bad. It's like, oh, watching 1080p and a screenshot looks like it's from fucking 240p. It's like, what right. Do- what do you mean? <laughs> Super blurry and ter- terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, important news before we get into the imp- uh, full impressions is uh, Sony is looking to buy Crunchyroll for like $9 billion or something outrageous. Yep. Yeah, almost a billion dollars. Uh, I thought it was like over, well over a billion. 900 no, million. No, I don't think so. 900 million, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. They're not worth that much, JD. Relax. I feel like they're not even worth a billion. I would agree. Yeah, that's that's ba- an barely, amount of money. <laughs> they're barely worth the monthly fee. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, scratching my throat. <clears> throat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're fuck. I I don't think they're worth even a dime. That's why I don't I don't pay for it. I just oh. use their free service. Yeah. And the free well, service then you is can't super watch broken. their anime in HD. Oh wait, <laughs> it's no not mind. in HD. I don't care what they say. <laughs> uh. Like I was, I was literally watching, uh, one anime on Anime Lab, and it claims it's not HD, but I swear it was in at least 720, just totally free. Mm-hmm. And then I just switched over to Crunchyroll to watch uh, one of the other ones I'm gonna talk uh, talk about here shortly. And that looked like it was maximum 480. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> it's so, okay. Yeah, country rolls bad. Okay, <laughs> no, country rolls bad. <laughs> so, uh, Netflix has a bunch of anime that has come out uh, for the season. Uh, Dragon's Dog Dogma looks pretty interesting, but one I actually kind of checked out. This is kind of a pseudo review. Is Blood of Zeus. I believe it's a Netflix exclusive anime. It is, uh, I believe it's made by them. It's about the, uh, an offshoot deity, you know, half, half son of Zeus, uh, situation, hence the name blood of Zeus. Um, so all the, all the gods are of course assholes up in the heavens. Zeus is a, uh, Zeus is a, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's found his latest fling and, (laughs) Uh, of course, he disguises himself as you know the 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 husband makes uh, gets the woman pregnant and they're ousted. She has twins. One twin is of Zeus's blood. The other twin is of the actual father's blood. Don't ask how that worked out. <laughs> that's, yeah, no. that's you know that's just you know God stuff. He's at least having at least one of those sons, right? So, um, of course, he wants to kill. Uh, uh, the one of the sons, the the Zeus one, and the wife, uh, more or less pushes him pushes him off a balcony. Like, don't kill my kid, you psycho. <laughs> more <laughs> and, or less. Hmm. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so she uh, Zeus uh, then saves her, uh, escapes with uh, with her and the one child, while the other one is left behind. And uh, the uncle, of course, Game of Thrones type situation, uh, sneaks out and basically throws the baby in into uh, off a cliff, and a retainer saves the child. That's what happened there. So that one uh, grows up uh, with very much disdain for the world around him, and uh, ends up. Uh, Events happen, and he ends up uh, just, uh, running away from the uncle's guards, I guess, that's looking to kill him because he's the rightful king. And he comes across a uh, titan's uh, corpse, right? And the story goes, if you uh, touch the corpse, you will be drawn into eating its flesh, and then you will become a demon. So half demon, half human type situation. So that's what he becomes... And he more or less infects uh, other humans, or makes a cult out of it, where they become demons, and that's that's your uh, that's your main antagonist. But really, the antagonists are always end up being the gods. And Hera, pissed off wife of Zeus, uh, wants everything she can to make Zeus's life a living hell. So scorned woman, uh, 
right there. Rightfully so, because Zeus was a, f- a f- phila- uh, what is it, philanthropist? I think that's the word, right? Uh, what do you mean by that? He was, well, he's a, uh, well, he's an adulterer. There, that's that's a better word. Yeah, I don't think that's the same. <laughs> yeah, the other one is about being a good person and doing, like, charity a lot no yeah yeah, yeah like you're that. right you're right i am i am definitely incorrect <laughs> yeah. that is not the He's word a i was philanthropist. <laughs> yeah, i was like oh why this. she's pissed <laughs> <laughs> zeus is just doing charity work oh what a scorned woman she is oh you no, need no, a no, kid he's... you get a kid you get it <laughs> yeah. yeah well i mean <laughs> i mean kinda. he's doing a lot of shit <laughs> he's definitely doing something he's ge- he's definitely giving things away uh, not and, the thing anyways and thus god of war started yeah, yeah. so so yeah uh, <laughs> zeus, zeus, zeus a uh, and planting some seeds around <laughs> so zeus when he escapes with his uh his his side his side uh his side ch- side woman he takes her to a village with with the baby and puts a like a fog o- permanently over the sky not really cloud coverage it's more a fog where hera can't see or find them in this uh city right but the uh the people of the city ha- uh, c- are convinced that she has brought this like plague to them so they're they're outcasts of the city they live on the edge uh always in danger kind of situation but um what ends up happening is a Roman guard situa- Greek Roman guard situation. I don't know what they're called exactly, but uh, she and her her troop are chasing down the demons, and um, this old man has sort of guided and helped uh, this this uh, our main character here uh, throughout his life. But he's still kind of very pissed off that he lives in these situations. So you you just kind of see a pattern here between our our demon character and our main character. Turns out, of course, the old man is Zeus. He wants him to kind of fend for himself, uh, guide him throughout because he can't be directly involved, but he can guide the way uh, situation. So he's, you know, manipulating the the laws of Olympus. And um, as as is as in any Greek tragedy, uh, we do learn that the demon is the lost twin. So he, in fact, killed his mother, his real mother, before learning who she was. Uh, and Hera convinces him to uh, uh, fight for her and her cause of fucking Zeus and his world up. And our main character uh, is kind of the defender of man. And I'm really into it. It's it's uh, well animated. It has a western, more western style to it because it's a Netflix produced show. Uh, it's well, I, I would say it's pretty well written. I, I can definitely follow everything. I think it, it sets and reveals up things that make sense. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm definitely going to uh, continue watching it, and I can't wait to watch more. It's I'm playing Hades <laughs> on the Switch. Uh, review and thoughts coming out on uh, the Modern Gamecast that'll come out later. Uh, so I was very much in the mood for some Gods of Olympus type stuff. So fun, fun things. Hmm. So now, now to the actual fall anime. Uh, we each have three. Hickey, why don't you go first? Start us off. Sure. Let's start off with yes, the one I watch it the least. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go with Majo no Tabi Tabi, or the the Witch Journey. Uh, yeah, something like that. <clears throat> Synopsis goes, once upon a time, there was a witch named Elina, who set off a journey across the world. Along the way, she would meet all kinds of people, from con- countries full of witches to, giant, to a giant in love with his own muscles. Okay, why is that in the synopsis? Uh, <laughs> but with each meeting, Elena would become a small part of their, their story, and her own world would get a little bigger. So yeah. It is just a journey, magical journey, fun anime. Very relaxing. Uh, been helping a lot with uh, the state of affairs in my life right now. Because I don't have time to do anything and I just want to pass out every single time. So it helps me a lot. Aside the first episode, uh, 
first episode would uh, be what I call distressful. Uh, I didn't like it. Honestly, I didn't like the story, how the, the story started, because she doesn't start as a witch. She goes through a qualification. She wants to travel like a... There's a fairy tale of a Vendoran witch, which she, want, which she admires. And so she asks her family, if I become a witch, can I travel? And her mother is like, sure. <laughs> you know what? Pfft, silly kid, you were like three years old. Sure, you can go. Uh, so she becomes the... She goes to to attend a. What is it? she? She studies a lot. Then she do, she takes a test and becomes the youngest apprentice of all of all time, like thirteen years old, fourteen years old. And she's like, "I'm a genius. I'll just pass my qualification to be a witch, and I'll be traveling." But no one wants to accept her because she's a genius, and people don't like those kind of guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she ends up with this mysterious witch that comes uh, to, to install in the city called Flan, in the, in the outskirts. She asks to be her apprentice. And then it's just like, not even training, it's just her doing uh, some chores and food and things like that until the, the climax of the episode where she fights Flan. Like she, after a year, I think, just being dragged around, uh, doing nothing, just being exploited, basically. And it's like really, really bad. She cannot do anything. She's pretty much a punch bag. Uh, really, really bad. Like really, I thought it was a really, really bad written story. I wasn't feeling good watching it, the first episode. Uh, and then it's like, well, you fought. And, you know, when she saw them just crying and say, I know, like, you're just like everyone else. Uh, you just want to push me around and exploit me and why not? And then the the witch explained she isn't like that. It's just like her her parents asked her to do that. She teach her about how life is unfair or something. I was like, man, that is a dick move. That was one hell of a dick move. But aside the first episode, the rest of it has been uh, great. So don't, don't take the first episode as uh, how the story progresses. Because I honestly believe it was... Uh, too much in a sense I don't think it was uh, I think it was important the lesson was important the way it was taught it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't uh, that good uh, written but aside from that it is it's still very relaxing very upbeat very fun and, and I will keep watching it especially again helps me it's the type of anime that when you come home uh, really really tired of Hearing about how someone fucked their own sister and then there is a child now, you know it, <laughs> it's 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 good. It's good to relax. It's good to watch somebody else get beat up. No, not really. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's if mm, depends, depends on the scenario. Depends on the scenario. Uh, but yeah, also by uh, for legal reasons, what I said was a example. Not a true fact. Yes, of course. Yes. All right, then. So, for me, the first of the three shows that I'm going to be talking about, I guess, would be uh, Crunchyroll Original. Oh, Ooh. that always <laughs> right, <laughs> that always ends in great things. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And I'm, of course, talking about the uh, new Webtoon adaptation for this season called Noblesse. All right. by, uh, like I said, it's a uh, Crunchyroll original, and it's my, uh, done by production, blah, by Studio Production IG. And it's directed Speaking by, of learning Korean. <laughs> and it's uh, directed by Shunsuke Tada and uh, Iyasutaka Yamamoto. And they're both listed as directors, I assume they share the job. Uh, so yeah, the synopsis goes something like this. Raisel awakens from his 820 year slumber. He holds the special title of Noblesse, which is a pure-blooded noble and protector of all nobles. All other nobles. Mm -hmm. In an attempt to protect... Uh, yeah. In an attempt to protect Rysel, his servant Frankenstein, enrolls him at Yeron High School, where Rysel learns the simple and 
quotidian routines of the human world through his classmates. Excuse me, what was that word? Uh, quotidian. I have uh-huh. never seen that word before, so uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that's okay. However, the Union, a mighty secret organization with strengths around the globe and a goal to rule the world, dispatches modified humans and gradually encroaches on Rysel's life progressively. Okay. Uh, which causes him to wield his mighty power to protect those around him. After 820 years of intrigue, the secrets behind his slumber are finally revealed. And the night sells about absolute protection as the noblesse begins. Source. <laughs> of course, Crunchyroll, yes. Uh, it had so, quotid- quotidian means of or occurring every day slash daily. Yeah. And in uh, medicine, it means uh, denoting the malignant form of malaria. <laughs> Oh. For those e- either way, it's accurate. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I recognize. I was like, oh, I know this word. I was like, oh yeah, that is Latin. I have a word just like that in Portuguese. <laughs> uh, it just makes uh, it just makes sense just to it's say this is by Crunchyroll. So it makes sense that yeah. they would try to make it sound more fancy than it actually is. Yeah, in- in- yeah. Instead of saying just daily routine, they have to use quotidian. <laughs> it's quoted. Yeah. There yeah, are yeah, yeah, quotidian yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, routines. It's, this, it's basically the same word. I was like, huh, <laughs> I didn't know English had that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> as you as a daily. native English speaker, I for did me, not either. <laughs> yeah, for me, like, of course, I, I also have a, a direct translation to daily, but I was like, it's good enough. I, like, it's, not a, it's not daily, per se. It's, something, it's just something that uh, happens recurrently enough. Yeah, oh, yes. daily. Less in this show, because it's literally just like day by day. Uh, but yeah, no. So, basically. Noblesse is a, uh, like I said, it's a webtoon. It's a webtoon that I read some, I don't even remember, 200 chapters off something a while ago. It's Did we cover it during the checkout era? I don't think you did. No. no. And I, I, I don't think, think I recommend you to do it either. Um, so, Noblesse was kind of one of the first, like, really big, uh, big webtoons. Sure. And uh, people really like it. I think it's decent, Mm -hmm. if a little bit too long and a little bit too one note, but that's neither here nor there. So, I still want to see what it was like when it got turned into an anime, you know, again. But, (laughs) because this is not the first time. So, color me surprised when the opening episode happens and uh, 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 Raisel, or Rai as they call him, is... Already in school, and I'm just like, hold on, hold on. That's not where the story begins. What are we doing here? And then I learned after, it's like, oh, no, no, no. This is a sequel to those other other times they tried to adapt uh, adapt the show, where they went through the beginning. I'm like, oh, okay, so you, so if you don't know what you're doing, you need to watch the OVAs first. What? Got it. Yep, this is a sequel. <laughs> oh. Uh, so God that's, damn it. That's fun. So, essentially... If anybody watched this and they were confused, what you essentially missed is you missed the uh, you <laughs> the missed the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you missed the um, the disappearance of the uh, the coffin, the coffin that gets smuggled out of Vampire Land. I don't remember what it's called right off the top of my head, um, and gets smuggled into. Uh, I was about to say this is. Uh, I don't. I don't remember where it is. It's in. It should be in uh, Korea, Korea, but I don't remember exactly <laughs> where. No, I know, but I don't remember exactly where. Was it Soul? It's probably Soul. Probably. Uh, go with Soul. <laughs> yeah, probably. Either way. Pyongyang. So, you know, they fucking people, the union is after it because they want to get this, uh, they want to get this coffin. It's really important. It holds the power of the noblesse. Uh, obviously, that is uh, Rysel, and he wakes up and kicks some major ass because he's super strong, and uh, and then we go on about our life. It's not very long. Uh, they also introduce the concept of modified humans because that's kind of important because that becomes one of the um, people that works with uh, Nysel and Frankenstein or after uh, anyways after that because he is one of the guys who goes after them is M21 and he is a uh, modified human and that's a whole plot point of a bunch of humans that were gathered up by the by the union and experimented on to get ability so that they could fight these vampires but you know they're not strong enough nor are they stable so 
they don't have a very long life a lifetime or whatnot which uh, as for anything that you ever experienced that has this type of plot point in that doesn't really matter <laughs> and uh you know and the thing that's supposed to be with Rysel, he is kind of your the opposite of like a typical like shonen protagonist this is kind of shown in the battle system and whatnot but that's almost like the opposite, right? Rather than being somebody who starts out weak and attain, uh, tries to be stronger and become stronger, he starts off really fucking strong, kind of powered down because he's been asleep for so long. But he starts off really strong, but as a, uh, strong, but as the show progresses, he is uh, slowly losing his power because he's not meant to exert this power as often as he is, or some other reasons I don't that I don't recall. But he um, he's essentially growing weaker. So that's the crux. Like, the enemies are progressively getting stronger and stronger, and he's progressively getting weaker and weaker. Which should be fun. If it worked out that way. The problem is that, as with anything, since the enemies are constantly getting stronger, and uh, he is constantly getting weaker, in order for Rysel to overcome these stronger enemies, he has to grow stronger before he grows weaker, which is weird. But that's that's the logic behind it, I guess. He gains new powers and expends more power, and then it's like, oh my god, you like half, you like took, got rid of like half your lifespan. And I'm like, isn't he eternal? Wasn't that like a thing? Does that matter? <laughs> I guess it does. <laughs> but um, you know, what's half of infinity? <laughs> yeah, that's so you know, it, it doesn't matter. That's that's kind of the problem. There's a lot of like. There's a lot of grandiose stuff happening, but I feel like it's kind of undermined by its own writing in a lot of places. Right? It, it's it's not it's not great, and neither is this. As you can see, it has like a six point six on Mal, which is not bad score, and it's not. Still, awful. a lot of people are watching it. Almost a hundred thousand, according to. Uh, oh yeah, my yeah. Analysis. No, people were looking forward to this. Like again, it's not an awful show. It's annoying that you have to watch stuff beforehand. But again, it's like two OVAs. It's not that long. It's not that much story either. So it's it's whatever. But you know, it, if you if you're interested, well, first of all, you should probably just read the webtoon. It's better, I guess. Faster, better, Although, stronger. <laughs> I, I wouldn't really say it's faster either. But it's it's okay. Like I wouldn't really recommend Noblesse, anyways. Mm-hmm. Like it's. It's fine for what it is, but it's like if you've seen like any of these shows with like super strong main character defeating enemies, and then like you know you've seen them a lot. And the backdrop is just again, like I said, the modified humans, the rest of vampire kind. We get introduced to um, in the second episode. We get introduced to uh, what are their names? It, yeah. Seda Lawyard and uh, Regis uh, Landegra, or however you're supposed to pronounce that name, who mm-hmm. are also nobles, uh, noble vampires, and uh, they have come to uh, investigate what the fuck happened uh, when the uh, when a big battle in the be- uh, in the beginning, the uh, one with the modified humans and uh, die that pretty much destroyed an entire fucking skyscraper that you know. Uh, don't worry about it. Nothing happened here. It's like I don't know. I'm not buying that. So they infiltrate the school, trying to get figure out what the hell is going on. And it's it's got it's got its own. It's got a nice style of humor. I will say I do like it because the vampires, despite being nobles and despite being like super old and all of that, they they have always lived a uh, they've always lived like above humans. Right, they're considered humanity's protectors in a way. They don't really do much for them. Like they don't really do much unless they are approached by humans. But they, their blood as nobles uh, refuse to abandon those weaker than them or some bullshit that they stated in the beginning, and that's that's why they've kind of always helped humans where they needed, like when they needed fire or when they needed you know shit like that. So it's kind of funny seeing these people like kind of look down on humans without really doing it so because like you know <laughs> they can't. They look down on humans for not being strong enough, but si- simultaneously they're not really going to do anything about it because they can't. They're supposed to. They're supposed to be nice to them, so they have these like weird, weird moments. So same thing. They don't understand human society. They, they haven't been in contact with human society for so long. There's like walking into cities and shit like that. It's like, what is this? Guy has his own thing with noodles because he woke up after like eight hundred and twenty years. 
So he is like, what are what are these things that you put in? You you just add warm water to them and then you eat them. So yeah, but don't let them stay. Don't let them sit too long because then they're gonna absorb the water and they're gonna multiply. Multiply, you say? I guess I'm gonna wait then. <laughs> I'm just gonna let them absorb all the water, like weird shit like that, which is slightly humorous at times. But yeah, now nah, it's. It's like the epitome of like a 5, 6 out of 10 show. It's, so it's perfectly a okay. Basically a marker of its mouse score. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess that uh, goes into me. So I marked the timestamps for all this for our dear listeners. <clears throat> so I'm doing Sorcery Fight. Although Yuji Itadori looks like your average teenager, his immense physical strength is something to behold. Every sports club wants him to join, but Itadori would rather hang out with the school outcasts in the occult research club. One day, the club manages to get their hands on a sealed cursed object. Little do they know, uh, the terror of their own niche will when they break the seal. So that's a terrible synopsis. Uh, so basically, there is a kind of... Uh, I guess demon group, demon hunters group, and they're looking for all of these uh, cursed objects, and they're uh, fingers of this various, uh, let's call it a super demon. <laughs> and it turns out our main character has an affinity with these objects, uh, one in like 10 million, or 100 million, or whatever the number, out- outrageous number was, uh, comes across, it's a once in every like four generation uh, coincidence, and our main character... Uh, uh, via consuming this in a last ditch effort to not die via this uh, this demon uh, that's uh, sealed within this curse object, uh, he eats it and then kind of assimilates with uh, part of this demon. Um, under normal circumstances, you would be consumed by it, the demon would be unleashed, uh, and the, the, the power would be tough to stop. Uh, but he, because of his innate ability to assimilate with it, he can uh, control this pretty much how he feels like it. Um, Tori, you mentioned that it's kind of lame. Uh, I think at least the in the universe of the story, at least they explained it uh, good enough for me. It's not deep or any means. Uh, it is a shonen type anime. It's by Mappa, so it's uh, I really like the art style and how it how it moves uh, throughout f- various fight scenes and whatnot. And even the even the three main characters that we get along the ways, uh, they they have very unique um, personalities to them. So you have Itadori, you have this uh, country girl, whom is wacky, and then you have our, uh, our our more or less serious type guy, but he's got his own uh, quirky personality traits to him as well. And the three the three of these uh, meet, and that's kind of where we're at. One, that's episodes one to three. Uh, who's the director on this? Uh, Song Hoo Park. Okay. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Korean type stuff here going on in this episode today. Uh, he's done Blade and Soul, which is a Korean game. <laughs> uh, Garo Movie. Um, some Macross F stuff. Uh, God of High School director. So he's very much in the uh, Korean type aspect. So... Um, I'm definitely into it. It's definitely pretty, uh, standard shonen. Uh, a, a, a little part of me is kind of not feeling the overall end goal to this. Uh, the, the main character, he, his, basically his grandfather died and his dying wish was to kind of help people. Uh, more or less. Don't and be this alone. Is, don't be alone, help people. Uh, and th- this really hits our main character hard. That's... More or less his motivation, uh, but deep down, as per the, uh, the the sorcery school that he has to go to now, um, his his trial made him uh, reveal that he just doesn't want to uh, ignore responsibility. And right now his responsibility is because he is the only one that can assimilate with these uh, demon objects uh, through the super demon uh, that's his responsibility. So he he fully accepts it, and he doesn't like. If someone was to come across one of these and they die, he has neglected his responsibility. So I'm like, okay, good enough. I understand. And he, the objective is 
this sorcery group is going to put him through school, put him through all these trials and tribulations, gather all... Uh, I guess it's 20 fingers and toes, or is it 10 objects only? 10 fingers? Uh, either either or. He has to collect them all, and then at the end, when he's, uh, when, when he's um, destroyed these, because they can't just be destroyed by magic, uh, they will kill him. <laughs> or, if he denies, he can just be killed now. Mm -hmm. So, that's, like, his, the end goal is his death. Uh, yep. Prediction, I guess, is he assimilates, and the more he assim uh, more he tries to assimilate these objects, the more it's going to be uh, supposedly tougher to control the demon that he's assimilating with. Uh, or he will just get so powerful they can't just kill him. So uh, either or, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's like pretty standard, Shonen. Excuse me, Hickey. I like the odds. <laughs> the uh, the odds are pretty good. It's a uh, Shonen Shonen Shield. <laughs> <laughs> so in the end I was too powerful it was <laughs> all my power as I am faster than the world's fastest man and yeah I am yeah actually they don't really God. explain why he has this innate like a crazy physical ability I don't uh, I, I just love the fact that nobody really seems all that bothered by the fact that this normal high school dude is like oh yeah casually he's fucking faster than Usain Bolt like beats Ca the fucking ba beats the fucking world record at a hundred meter sprint by like two seconds. It's like, yeah, that's just him. I, well, like, the I, shot put was really funny, where the teacher wants him to join the track and field team, and yeah. the teacher's like all jacked, and you know, he he can throw it. I don't know, it's like fifteen meters or something. It's ten meters short of the of the, uh, the 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 national record, and then he just gets up, chucks it into the into the football post. <laughs> and yep. cracks the world record e with ease, and everyone's like, oh, man, he kicked your ass. Like, uh, what about that shot put that's embedded into the post over there? <laughs> How about the fact that nobody is there being like, dude, fucking sign a pro deal or something. Fucking go to the Olympics, dude. What the right. Hell? Yeah. But everyone's right. like, ah. ah. I, 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 just want, I just want to hang out with my occultist friends. <laughs> man, those chicken hormones nowadays are doing bonds. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's just steroids, so he cannot. He I mean, cannot compete. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> he cannot compete uh, on the Olympics because he's just jacked up in steroids. Uh, we'll go with that. Listen, they have a they have a specific rule uh, for the Olympics. Um, you cannot be possessed by demons mm. or be on I'm sure, steroids. I'm sure they can check that. That's why blood. Russian doesn't <laughs> Russia doesn't compete anymore. <laughs> Uh, uh, good jokes, good jokes. I mean, I'm I'm obviously gonna continue this. It has a very high mal score. I think that's kind of overstating it. I'm not like crazy overly impressed with my initial viewing. Do I still like it? Absolutely. Uh, it's very easy to watch. It's fun. Um, we'll see if it gets a little deeper. I'm not keeping my hopes hopes up on that. But uh, yeah, it's by Mappa, so it looks good. It feels good. Uh, I'm, it I'm good. not. Yeah, you know, it smells good, tastes good when I lick my computer and it's on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'll pass it. Um, I'm going to continue it. Yeah, it's Sorcery Fight. Why not? You're up, picky. Okay, next one. Uh, Tonikaku Kawaii. Yay. That is Yay. a very, very, very long synopsis for it. Uh, oh, let's boy. see if I can... I can cute girls doing cute it. things. There you go. No, it's... Hey, done. Uh, <laughs> it's mature. Uh, having grown up ridiculized by his bizarre name, Naza Yuzaki strives to be remembered for something more. For fortunately, it seems he's on the right path, ranking first in the nation's mock exam and said to enter his high school choice. Of choice. However, everything changes in a single night when he noticed a girl across the street on his way home. And uh, that is a lot of... I don't know why my animalist uses so many long words. Uh, she was so cute, she, he, became, he fell in love in the first, uh, at the first sight. But you know, when he was running across the street to get her, guess what? What happens in anime when you cross the street running? As we learn, Trunkun! Trunkun! He's come back! Oh, I missed him. Fucking 
it just spawns out of nowhere, like thin air. And but what happens is, as he believes his will, he will die. The girls intervene and jumps in front of the truck. Uh, he still gets hit very, very hard. She, uh, she gets hit as well, but he doesn't die. He gets very, very, very hurt, and she, she as well. And she just says, "Hey." Uh, call the ambulance for this guy. I don't need an ambulance, although I'm just uh, bleeding as well. He's there. He's bleeding to death. He needs to wait a ambulance. But he, she was so cute, he couldn't pass the opportunity to, you know, ask her in a date. So he just get up and run uh, to meet her. And even though he's suffering from uh, blood loss, he says, you're very cute. Please be my girlfriend. And at that moment, he almost passed out because, you know, the, the adrenaline of the accident is running low and he's feeling all the, the effects of getting run over by a truck. Uh, so, he's, so she says, I can go out with you, but you need to marry me. After that encounter, he gets, he gets so in love with that moment that he gives up going to a high school or to a university. So what he does is he starts to work. He drops the school and starts to work in a in a convenience in a convenience store, in hopes that he can find her again. Thing is, he's extremely smart. So instead of just being uh, just keep working on the the convenience, he starts to to gamble in the stock market and kind of becomes stable. It's a stable life, just uh, trading stocks, which is a little bit funny. Uh, until one day, a year passed, she just appears in his front door uh, saying, Hey, uh, hi, it's past midnight, but let's get married because that's our promise. They end up getting married for some reason. Uh, and that's when they st- uh, and she starts to live with him. It's a, it's a story about how this guy just met this woman one day and they uh, marry and start like living together. There is a lot of uh, subliminal supernatural things in the background the the hints that is she's immortal she's a, she's an immortal being uh, often she talks about not liking old stuff uh, about she can read old languages no one knows and she mm. got hit by a truck and didn't die <laughs> so like no, that that's is, that's that doesn't mean anything yeah that is true that this is anime that things happen but that is just in the in the background like it, it it's not important it's just something that uh keeps you engaging with the story to pay attention to the story and that regard is very well written you're always engaged because you want to you want to understand who is this mysterious girl a uh, guy doesn't care he has a cute wife and it goes the full course i think they they had sex yet but it's way more uh way above Whatever the fuck you can get in it. It's very fun. It's from the same guy who did... Uh, what is the name? Hayate. Hayate the Combat Butler. Yeah. Hayate no Gotoku. Which is a very, very, very long manga. which With a bunch of anime adaptations. Who is very fun as well. He also did Sorega Seiyu, I believe. Which is a very interesting anime as well. I don't know about the manga, but the anime was very good. The only problem I had with it is probably the studio. It's made by Seven Arcs. Uh, and Seven Arcs did iconic things like White Album uh, and what? Sekere, Dog Days. Uh, last season, I believe, they did... No, uh, two seasons ago, they did Arte, which was a fun, well-produced anime. This one is a little bit on the low scale, probably because it's from the same guy who did uh, Hayate. Hayate doesn't have the a majestic art to begin with but it's fun it's actually very very fun i'm having a lot of fun with it as well it's just a light-hearted romance comedy romance uh where where people not only just hold hands and be all uh, shy about it they go all the way so with a supernatural plot behind which is it's always uh, good to engage the audience of keeping uh, watching the show and you know it's it, ha- it almost has a 8.0 in my anime list which uh, shows a little bit of how interesting people are in the in this anime 
I don't know. It sounds a bit lame to me. It is lame. <laughs> it is. It is lame. I like that the guy's like, well, this this sound this woman just appears out of nowhere after like a year and says, yeah, no, let's get married. Here's here's the registration paper. I just need you to sign and put in his like, man, this might be a scam. <laughs> it's like this this sounds like a scam, and she he just looks at her. He's like, oh, she's cute. I don't care if I be a scam. I was like, oh my god, you Japanese motherfucker. <laughs> what do you mean? I might great. never get another chance. Yeah, well, shit. Hey, man. I think uh, getting married just to get the puss is a little bit too much, but hey, you know you. But it's fine. I guess so. It's a fun enemy. I guess so. All right, then. Let's move on to my next one. And my next one is IWGP, a.k.a. Ikebukuro Westgate Park. All right. So, Ikebukuro Westgate Park is made by Doga Kobo, and it is directed by Tomoaki Koshira, who has done some stuff that I don't really know. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, you know, it'd be like that sometimes. Of course. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. <laughs> so, anyways, the synopsis goes something like this. Crime-ridden Ikebukuro is a haven for violent gangs, the Yakuza, and home to Makoto Majima. To protect his friends, this charismatic troubleshooter mediates disputes among the warring factions, even fixing problems the police can't. But when a rising tide of violence results in Makoto losing a loved one, can he ride out the storm, or will he drown in all the spilled blood that flows his streets? So, that last line there is probably what got me uh, interested in this uh, huh. this anime. However, I've seen three episodes now, and so far that hasn't happened. So, it'll probably happen at, uh, at roughly the midway point. I assume that'll be the climax uh, at the midway point to get you to the end. So far, right. for the first three episodes, it's been pretty episodic. Bog standard? This is yeah. A, this is an interesting choice for the director. I know sure. most of the anime he, he worked at. Actually, I think I know every single one. Of them. Oh, he directed... Yeah, he directs cute stuff. Like Senko-san. <laughs> well, uh, well, Shokuma Cafe, episode direction, and Stella. Why is this guy here? The fuck because, happened? Because. Here's the thing, right? The, the thing that's kind of I funny about Hideo. this... The thing that's funny about this thing, right, is that we are f- essentially following um, our main character, Makoto Majima. He's just kind of your average dude working in a uh, a flower shop, but he also just has contacts with like every gang in the fuck in Ikebukuro and uh, normal is, guy, uh, normal dude. Yeah, normal guy. You know, and they just come to him sometimes asking him for help. Like, can you help us deal with this situation? Oh, like you know. Nothing big, no. Just like um, uh, there's a there's a drug addict on the loose, and he's uh, causing trouble. We uh, need to get him. And it's like sure, I'll see what I can do, or you know, close down businesses or whatever. And it's kind of funny, right? Because it takes the concept of like uh, uh, gangs and like uh, criminal organizations, and then kind of pits them up against each other. You have uh, Takashi Ando, who is the uh, leader of the gang, which I. Uh, G boys, that's the uh, that's the local gang. He is he is their undisputed. He's their king. He's the undisputed leader, and everybody in Ikebukuro loves him. And the funny thing is, in episode one, right, we start off by seeing a dude uh, who's clearly on some stuff. Uh, you look can see it in his eyes and everything. He is trying to escape the uh, these people that are chasing him. It's like all right, you, you just assume that it's a drug bust gone wrong or like a a drug deal gone wrong. Right, so he is just fucking sprinting, and then he tries to lose them, and he fucking disappears into the crowd. And he's like, oh, I'm finally gone. And then Takashi Ando just walks out on stage, and everyone standing around him just fucking <laughs> takes on their G-Boys hats, and is just like, oh, fuck, I'm in enemy territory right now. And then he, he runs up on stage to fucking uh, beat uh, Takashi and just gets his absolute ass kicked. It is. It's fun. It's some funny stuff, and that's kind of the the deal, right? These criminal organizations are essentially working against 
or these gangs are essentially working against criminal organizations and, uh, you know, people that commit crime, essentially. Of course. So uh, it's got that li- little funny thing, like, you know, that little bit of vigilante justice going on, which is it's some, uh, it's, it, it makes for some fun stuff. It is a little bit boomerish, I find, <laughs> in the sense that, like, episode nice three... Nice use of the word. <laughs> no, but, like, literally, it, episode three was, like, the... Uh, uh, took place on like a YouTube streamer, like not even a streamer, a YouTube content creator. Like what he does is like he creates real moving art, uh, like, aka he does weird shit, like filming himself out in public. His big thing is throwing himself down the stairs. He rolls downstairs. He also smashes cool. eggs on himself and stuff like that. Like it's super fucking weird. So how it's somebody try. Yeah, but it's like it's like the most like boomer version. It's like it's like if a fucking like uh, boomer looks at this and be like, "Yeah, all right, I understand." Doesn't really understand it at all. <laughs> it's like it's literally that's literally it's just kind of like it, it feels like it's trying to. It's literally like the anime version of the fucking meme. It's like, "Hello, my fellow kids." <laughs> that, that's, uh, but that's mostly just episode three. Um, like episode, yeah, they tried to get rid of a. Um, there is a, there's a store that poses as like a medicinal store, like you know, kind of essential oil store. But in reality, they're selling weed behind the counter. <gasps> so you know, uh, Takashi Ando he goes to uh, goes to his bro Makoto and he's like, "We need to get rid of them. Can you can you do some stuff? Can you can you look into this?" And he's like, "Sure." I'll help because there's this little girl whose mother has been hooked on, or uh, whose mother, I don't remember if she had been hooked on drugs herself. I think she had gone to confront them and she had been hospitalized. But uh, it's like, so this little girl is destined to fucking tear, uh, get revenge. But uh, so Makoto decides to help out and they go one day. They manage to figure out what's going on and provide evidence and get the police involved and then catch the guys who are running this operation. They, uh, at least on the ground floor, there is hints that there are people higher up. But, again, so far it's mostly been episodic. It's okay. Like, I I think it's enjoyable. It's not super good. Another one was, like, uh, trying... Uh, there's another... Um, in, like, episode two, there's another uh, gang that's coming in as well. Uh, led by... Uh, a guy called Kyoichi Osaki, uh, Osaki, who's a very handsome dancer and very good dancer at that. So, you know, they kind of have that whole, like, bishy boy thing going on as well. And they kind of get into a little bit of a altercation because they think the, the rival gangs are going after each other. When in reality, it turns out that there's a third party just messing with both of them. So then they go and kick their ass. <laughs> and stuff like that. It's, it's perfectly A-OK. I'd say, like... Where I'd say noblesse is more like five six scale. I said this is like this is definitely like a solid six for me. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's not again based on the first three episodes. It's fairly episodic and not super like engaging, but it's fun. It's okay. So I, I don't know if I'll con- I don't know if I'll finish it, but I'll give it a couple more episodes and hopefully that final line in the synopsis something will happen with that soon because you know I feel like <laughs> I hope it's not like the last episode. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm doing, as I get the timestamp here all down, I'm doing uh, Yasahime Princess Half Demon, aka the sequel to Inuyasha. <clears throat> you saw this coming? I said I'd do it. Uh, I went into this not with the biggest of expectations, especially after, well, I think the most recent example is Boruto, the sequel to Naruto uh, Shippuden. Uh, much like that, it, it's uh, about the children of your main characters from your previous show. So we have the children of Inuyasha and Kamo- Kagome, the children of uh, Koha- uh, not Kohaku, uh, um, Sango and Miroku, etc. So the summary is uh, from Anime Planet by Studio Sunrise. Set in feudal Japan, half-demon twins, Toa and Setsuna, are separated from each other during a forest fire. While desperately desperately searching for her younger twin, Toa accidentally gets gets sucked into a tunnel 
that sends her into present-day Japan, where she is found and raised by Kagome's brother, uh, named Sota, and his family. Ten years then pass. The tunnel that connects the two reopens, uh, which causes Toa to be reunited with uh, her lost twin sister, uh, who is now a demon slayer working for Kohaku. And for those that recognize that name, that is the younger brother of Songo. Uh, but to Toa's surprise, Setsuna has lost all her memories uh, of her of her childhood, and uh, they are joined by Mor- uh, Morowa, whom is the daughter of Inuyasha and Kagome. The three young women travel between the two, era- two eras on an adventure to regain their missing past. So... Again, I went into this with extremely low exp- expectations based on uh, what other anime have done uh, this way. And the the very first episode is kind of a, let's call it a bridge episode. Okay, it, it uh, it's about Inuyasha and Kagome. It's kind of taking place after the series and more or less before this one kicks off. Uh, they're fighting uh, this demon called a uh, 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 root head. It's this demon, I guess, root, if you will. And what it does is, uh, right before they're able to kill it, it does this last diff- ditch effort and puts part of itself into this tree, which they call they call it the Tree of Time, it, it, an old tree, and it has st- stood this test of time. But of course, it has uh, unique properties to it all. Uh, it is also next to the well in which Kagome uh, used to travel to and from Tokyo and feudal Japan. Uh, it does help to an extent to know Inuyasha. That way you don't need the whole spiel of what, where, when, and how everything is in the world. Although I do think it does a decent enough job explaining you know, the basics to a new viewer, so to say. What I do like about this is it seems to be setting itself apart uh, f- uh, with the old characters and focusing on a new story with these new characters that just happen to be uh, the children of your main characters from Inuyasha. And I wish Boruto did this because it became an anime that was so focused on, well, not the kids and their journey. Uh, that That's my outlook on it. So this one, it has one one of uh, so the two daughter the two twins are actually Shishomaru's uh, kids, and that's the uh, that's Inuyasha's older like more demon brother, right? And I really like how the main the the super main character is Toa, and that is the one that got sent into the future. And raised in Tokyo. So she has that aspect about her life. She's half demon of course. And uh, her sister of course was raised the other way around. And then you have Kagome's daughter who uh, Mohaku or Mo- Mohara. That's going to take a while for me to. Moroha. That's going to take a while for me to get that, get that name down. But Moroa is this really, like, you could definitely tell it's like a split personality between Kagome and the wildness of Inuyasha. Really funny, can do sa- can use sacred arrows, can use sword attacks. So it's, it, she, she's a wild child, and it's, it's quite funny. Uh, the, the second episode is all about your, your character building, and the third episode is kind of establishing uh, kind of the objective of what the series is going to be. Turns out Setsuna, Setsuna kind of came across this, like, dream butterfly demon, and that's what stole her memories, and uh, th- uh, th- that's their goal. And it's going to be, it's going to, I'm actually very much anticipating what the, the, the show is going to do and how this is going to play out. It feels truly like a sequel to Inuyasha with the focus on these new characters and their own story. And I'm very much anticipating what the what it's going to be. So I am very happy with this. Uh, nothing feels like filler. The bridge episode, I think, served a, a an important purpose to introducing you to kind of what this show is going to be at its base level. And then it goes into the episode, the couple episodes with our new characters. So yeah, I do recommend it if you're... An Inuyasha fan, and you like the 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 world and the similar as storytelling, 
then check this out. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you're not an Inuyasha fan, then probably pass. Pass on it. So, I'm watching it. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I should I watch it. it I completely forgot about it. Oh, I need to watch it. I like Inuyasha. It's, it's very, yeah, it's very chill. It's very much that same same way, and it and it looks good. And I like the character of Toa. I like what they're doing with her. Uh, she has this tomboyish act to her. She gets in a lot of fights. Uh, it works. Every everything makes sense and works to what they do. And it, it, the fact that they split the characters and their traits up accordingly, and it's uh, I I do expect eventually that we're going to see Inuyash and Kagome, but in a weird way, I kind of hope we just don't see them. They only reference them. Uh, they only reference them every once in a while, and maybe they do a flashback every now and again of something from the past with uh, with uh, uh, Moroa. Uh, maybe more flashbacks of when Toa was a kid in Tokyo. I could see them doing things like that. I hope they do things like that. Uh, I hope they kind of stay away from the Inuyasha and Kagome and and that main cast because I want them to do a new show with new characters. That's my hope. Yep, yep. All right, Hickey, your last one. My last one. Unfortunately, I didn't follow the all oh, new shows because you know it's easy to get by. My last show is Strike Witches. I don't give a shit. Strike Witches is great, <laughs> great. Uh, He's very yeah, passionate about this, uh, Tori. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude. Wrong. It's all it's all the oh, no, the no. main the main characters except one because she lost the power. New characters: Road to Berlin, taking back Carsland, and. S shots, crotch shots, George S. Patton commanding cute girls in battle. It's great. I love the show. But anyway, uh, yeah, George. They put George in I, your voice. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting them to include George S. Patton, uh, but he's there. So that was very interesting. I. It's mostly fan service. But anyway, no. no. Uh, George S. Benton? I'm talking about George S. Benton. I'm not talking about the crutches. I'm talking about George <laughs> S. Benton, the general. The American no. general. No! Uh, <laughs> since uh, he was technically already with Montgomery and Rommel, but he should be in Africa. Regardless. Story. Uh, unfortunately, again, you need to know, I guess, Strike Witches. This is the, the ending, I believe, of the story. Uh, it's the last uh, ditch, at least in the in the Europe, the Europe front. Uh, Strike which is a start. There's a, a it's a huge story that starts prior to World War One. Basically, humanity always has always been plagued by these aliens, uh, which from time to time they they attack humanity. But you have Women with power, they call them witches. They combat those. Um, they combat those neuroids, which are the aliens. They don't know the the origin and why not. When it comes, uh, then in 1914, in that war, uh, things become very badly, like very, really, really bad. Uh, the neuroids now are very, very strong. The witches cannot combat them well. They win, but with heavy losses. Which ends up, uh, because, you know, they need to fight in brooms and, and stuff. It's really bad. So, you have the, the development of the strike unit, which, which is kind of a, a boot with a propellers they use to fight, which improves the fighting, improves the armament. Now they can fight better. Until it's, uh, there's a few incidents in 1936, uh, during interwars, and then in 1939, I, I believe 1940, you have... Uh, the Neuro invasion, which takes over Europe, mo- uh, all of Europe. So then they do, they get a bunch of pilots or witches from different countries in that universe and put them together in st- uh, joint strike units, which are international fighting squadrons. They will go and take out those Neuroids and try to take, uh, take back Europe. This is the third season, I believe, uh, from the the main uh, the main story. Of course, it's a it's a much bigger project. You have a bunch of light novels, especially a manga, which covers other squadrons. 
This one is the 501. It's from the, the first and the second season. You follow the 501. Then you had the 502 anime, the Brave Witches, which is taking over, take back in Russia, I believe. Uh, but then now we are in the in the last ditch, taking over Berlin. I don't think it was the, it is the last one. The last one is the Nordic Empire. Is the last one, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's very interesting. We are still following the, the story of Miyafuji. Uh, she is basically a hero now. Uh, saved Galicia, which is France. Liberated uh, also part of Italy. And now the crew is back together for the last operation. This is purely fan service. Not gonna lie, it's the conclusion of a series that's, that have been in production since mid-2000s, I believe. The first anime is from 2010 or 2012, but the actual story started to be made in, in 2008, 2007. It's been more than 10 years. It's finally the conclusion. Of course, it won't be the conclusion. You still have other projects, uh, Luminous Witches and, and all the uh, other witches to be covered by. It's uh, more than 100 characters. But this is the last operation where most of the, the witches we know from the past series will get together and fight. Commanded by George S. Patton. Uh, yeah. It's always there. The director is an amazing director. He worked in basically everything. He's a jack of all trades. Uh, usually when he works in a series, he does everything. Which is, his name is Takamura Kazuhiro. Just as an example, which I think was one of the most prolific jobs he did, was in Mahochromatic. Very interesting show from the 2000s, I believe. He was the character design, the chief animation director, key animation uh, for the OP animation director, and the list goes on. Usually he, he does a bunch of works. He's, he worked in Neon Genesis Evangelion, Mo, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, and Seed Destiny, Queen Esmeralda, as in between animation. So, like, he even worked in Queen's Blade. The guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> It's a really, really good show. If you are a fan of Strike Witches, this is it. This is the definitive Strike Witches. And I'm really glad. I'm really happy. I never thought Strike Witches would come back. Uh, but, you know, I am a happy man because of this. Unfortunately, you cannot start from zero from scratch. Because there's a... Although you can... You can and you cannot at the same time. You can pick the third, like the third season and start it standalone, but there's a lot of things you won't understand. But it will be just like getting a movie and or the documentary about World War II, for example, and you don't know who who the person they're talking about is. But you know, it, at that point, by the end of World War II, they were already a war hero. For example, so you so you take things as granted. They explain a little bit who characters this, what they did, uh, but most of the time it's just like, well, okay, it's a war hero. Uh, she did amazing things in past series or past iterations of the series, uh, but you can watch it from uh, season three onwards, uh, get the, the the final ditch of it. But uh, it's good to watch every single other show for context. Uh, and for the story, which is, again, really good. Although there's a lot of crotch shots and ass shots, uh, this is this doesn't diminish how good the story and how well written the story is. It's something that's been uh, being built since, I think, Egypt, ancient Egypt. It's when the actual story starts and we have a timeline into the beginning of the series. So, yeah. Great show, great story. Unfortunately, we'll be remembered by crotch, crotch shots and ass shots. But it's fine. Uh, give it a shot. It's really good. That's the end. Or, or else I would keep going and going and going until we hit the three, four hours mark. Well, I'm glad you're having fun with it, Hickey. Oh, uh, if you're having fun, fun, then our listeners that love your uh, taste in anime, then they're having fun too. Definitely. Yeah, Most sure. Tori, <laughs> do you dispute uh, with what I just said? Nah, not yet. Okay. 
I need I need hard physical evidence before I can do that. Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop the count right there. I I, I know, I know. I should just go on Twitter, honestly, and blast AK there. That's right. Yeah, Twitter doesn't like strike creatures that much because the the Nordic Empire is basically Sweden. Everything, especially even even Norway, it's just Sweden. So, <laughs> doesn't like that much. Disrespect. <laughs> I swear. All right. Anyways, so my final show is uh, also a show that came back. Except, you know, in this case, it came back to be done again. And that is Higurashi no Naku Koro ni Go. 2020. <laughs> it's go- no, it's Go. They- it's called Higurashi no Naku Koro ni Go. Not oh, 2020. Lame. Lame. They-, they changed the name. 2020. Um, <laughs> I-, I understand why they changed the name. First one was lame. Wouldn't, it I, wouldn't be confusing I, at all. <laughs> I, not really, but, you know. It's, Super confusing, yeah. Tori. Just go on. Sure. Anyways, this time, it is not done by Studio Dean. It is done by Studio Pashone. Mm, and it is directed Pashone. by Keiichiro Kawaguchi, who has done such amazing things as uh, Middle Manager Tonegawa. Uh, directed that one. Frame Arm Girls. And, nice. uh, yeah. Also from you Hunkami know. Shimada. <laughs> Island. That's a that's a show that I watched. Jinsei, that's another shit show that I watched. Anyways, I'm not going to sit here and drag on everything this guy's done. Mm-hmm. Which I could do, actually. Holy shit, what the fuck? Anyways. Uh, yeah, the uh, synopsis goes on like this. It's very short. New kid Keiichi Maebara is settling into his new home of peaceful Hinamisawa village, making quick friends with the girls from his school. He's arrived in time for the big festival of the year. But something about this isolated town seems off, and his feeling of dread continues to grow, with a gnawing fear that he's right. What dark secrets could this small community be hiding? And I mean, if you if you've either played the visual novel or watched the original show, you know what is going on. But so, it's for fear really of shit. dragging up, for fear of dragging up an old uh, an old argument, Higurashi is like a psychological thriller mystery, kind of slightly horror elementy slice of life show. Mm-hmm. It, it's got both. It's a nice uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, you can't fucking get away from that from the beginning. I think a lot of people. Uh, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mm, look, mm, mm, no. Higurashi is one of the few enemies that actually scared me. Like one scene in particular in the hospital, but I don't think it's even in this. Film. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing, dude. It. That thing scared me. <laughs> Holy shit! I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That Holy was uh, that was so weird. But either way, we're not talking about that. That is, uh, I don't even think that is actually in this. No, it's not. Because I think of... it's the second season. I think that is the second season or the third. No, I season. know, but is that uh, wasn't that? E- either way, let's let's not get into that. Yeah. yeah the yeah. um. So basically, they're remaking it this time, and uh, unlike what Studio Dean did, they are trying to be. More of its own thing, would while simultaneously following the visual novel a lot more. They're working um, because you know Dean, Dean did not do that, uh, but really they're working a, a lot more following visual novels. They don't want to follow the visual novel. Uh, they they, 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 the didn't, they didn't want to. With fate. Yeah, no, I know, but like uh, they don't, uh, they don't do direct, uh, uh, like direct adaptations. I think Kegurashi was a like one of their good examples of doing it right. By not following the visual novel. But I can understand people... I can understand fans of the visual novel wanting a more true-to-form adaptation. Which is... I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be this. Because on one hand, they're working directly with, like... What are they called? Seventh Expansion or whatever. The people that made the visual novel. And... uh, But simultaneously, the director says that they're trying to do their own thing. But so far, it seems to be following the visual novel. From what I know, anyways. So, I I, I don't know. I, I don't really understand. But it's okay. The, so, yeah. Essentially, it's set in, like... It's in the 80s in Hinamisawa, which is, like, uh, a rural city that has a bit of a... A bit of a history. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit of a... Considered a bit of a creepy place. 
and kind of just tells the story of, like I said, my who's moving there and uh, weird shit is happening. People are acting a little bit weird. An accident has occurred, or an accident, which left a bunch of workers uh, killed or stuff like that. And But nobody's really talking about it. If he asks people, people kind of shut him down, act a little bit weird, he becomes a little bit suspicious. Shit is happening, people Damn disappear. Right. You, don't share your sh- you don't share your shit with outsiders. Uh, yeah, basically. And then, you know, the police gets involved and police officer comes up and grabs him and he wants to have a conversation with him to uh, ask if stuff go- stuff is weird. And uh, if I'm being very vague, I'm doing that on purpose because I don't really want to talk about it. Because, again, it is a little bit of that mystery element in it, so I don't really want to get into what exactly is for those that haven't seen this. But, um... Yeah, just know that when you watch the show, that immediate feel, that like immediate weird feeling that you get when you see them just a bunch of kids hanging out, having fun, joining a club, playing games. That's just the beginning. It is a part of it is a part of the entire experience. But they do that for a reason. It's to kind of set up the uh the flip, right? Because it is it is a little bit of like they hold back and then Where's the shit st- it kind of starts seeping in and then suddenly bang. They do kind of keep your attention because like, and this is not a spoiler because this is the first scene you ever see in the anime. It's a, uh, a couple of dark, uh, dark looking uh, silhouettes that are, one is sitting on top of another and bashing their fucking skull in with a baseball bat. And that is the yeah. first scene you see. So you yep. immediately know that something is kind of fucky here when they just immediately cut to normal school day. <laughs> it's like, in mm. rural Japan, everyone is having fun. Now no beauty style, aren't you? <laughs> Some weird uh, shit start you have. Yeah. Uh, I'm conflicted. No, I'm conflicted. I'm also conflicted on this one. Especially I, like, because there's the, the Garcha game coming. I oh, yeah. <laughs> so like, this, is, <laughs> this is not a revival of the show. I'm sorry if you like Higurashi. It's not a revival of the show because Higurashi is good. It's a revival of the show because they want to sell a gacha game. That is definitely true. It's also so kind of conflicted. evident by the fact that they only got Pashione to do this. Because I'm sorry, but Pashione is not very good. <laughs> yeah. Uh so, so what you're saying you know. is the animation and art style of this so, Higurashi is almost equal to what Dean used to be back in the day when the original was made? So here's the current debate. I, I, I prefer the original. <laughs> I agree, actually. But here's the current debate. Not as because shiny. The, the Higurashi, <laughs> the Dean Higurashi designs aren't exactly, you know, nobody praises Higurashi for its amazing art. It wasn't particularly good. It was serviceable, kind of off. Mm-hmm. But it's it's okay. Now, there's a bit of, bit of a debate going on right now, whether or not these new designs are good or not. I think they're absolutely horrible. And people think that are, they are good. Why are they good? Well, because they're done by the guy who does the, uh, uh, the Baki Monogatari, the Monogatari designs. Mm-hmm. Grisaya. So, yeah. For the Grisaya. So, yep. Yeah, for the Grisaya as well. Right, so it's like, I, I understand. I've seen... Like I when I when people pointed it out to me, I was like, "Oh yeah, I can see that now." And then I look at it and I compared it to the other ones, and I I'm sorry, but I think this while I understand it's the same guy, I think these designs are way worse than his normal designs. No, yeah, usually because he did he did the designs for I came a strip two as well. Oh god, yes. Uh, <laughs> no, hold on, hold on, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I keep strip. I keep a strip. One is a good game. I keep a strip. Two is not a good game. He puts. How can I? I don't want to say anything bad from the guy because I like him, but he he puts enough effort into his art. Uh, depending on how much you pay. Ah. I see. So <laughs> as as long as the payment is big the art will be good. You can even get, like, the first the first two seasons, like, first Bakemon, Bakemon got the season one and season two, and then yeah, you compare to, to the middle, like, even the Owari Monogatari, and you see how it improved in art style. Mm. Not well, to be fair, in they, that, the guy in that improved, regard... It's just because they paid him more. No, I know, uh, but in that regard, design, when you look at the... Has, a, a, has an amazing art from the beginning, but that's his 
love child, I guess. <laughs> but when you I don't when know you, when you don't pay that much, a kid strip or thing is it becomes like way too shiny and way too generic looking. Well, and... uh, I wouldn't even not even that, right? Uh, just to kind of I think the uh, monogatari example is kind of a little bit unfair because I think monogatari just made leaps and bounds and not just art but literally everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As no, it went going, but I, like I, the. Yeah. Um, the uh, like when you see this show, right? What I have problems with is just like it. It feels like it was kind of rough drawn, and I don't know if it's his fault, like it entirely. It could literally be the fact that it's just you know because while he does the character designs, he's obviously not the one who draws the character for every single scene. So I don't know. It could also just be a case of like the other people who are working character designs there are not doing a very good job. But it might be like it's they, hard didn't, to say. they didn't adapt very well to the to the art style when animating yep. and yeah. became a little bit yeah. Mm. yeah. But you I know, know, again, I, I, I still need to see when the the shit goes down, how the character behaves, like the, how the character model yeah. behaves, because although the original character designs aren't as good as well, the thing that mm. they go full deformed adds yes. to the to the weirdness of the scene. Yes. Like how they, the, the face structure gets deformed. It, it really gets that wrong When they go feeling. insane, it's you like, know that yeah. they're insane because they yeah, are. And it's like, just, it's not that it's scary, but it's like, holy, like you can, you can see very well because of the exagger- exaggeration ca- uh, capable of being shown by those models. I don't know about his because usually you don't see that with his models, like people going crazy. Crazy, really, 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 really crazy. It's usually uh-huh. more subtle, but I'm yes. used for like Grisaya and Bakemonogatari. Usually, it's mm. like very, very, uh, very, very. Subtle. They do have their own deformed, especially Monogatari has his own deformed versions, but it's mostly comedic and kind of. Usually, yeah. Like... Usually, also it changes the art style uh, yep. for for the the exaggeration. It's part of the the gimmick of mm. Shaft. So yeah. I don't know. I need to see how the, the models... That is one thing I'm interested in. How the models so, will behave. So here's the thing. They don't do what Dean did. In the sense that they warp the characters very much. They they do go a little bit like wide-eyed and whatnot. But it's not like... It's not like uh, <laughs> Dean was like their eyes became their entire face. And mouth wide open big. They don't They don't stretch them like that. However, one thing they did include was the uh, uh, the thing that kind of got left out of a lot of Dean's Higurashi, which is the uh, the thing with the neck, which is creepy enough in of itself. Because they, when they're kind of going insane, they start scratching their neck as if they have this really bad itch, and they start clawing up their neck, and they start bleeding and cuts, and they just can't stop clawing. So they kind of they do that instead, which is creepy in its own right. So you know, it's not. It's, they, they have their own way of doing it. They don't need to have the character look like they're overdosing on some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it depends. It honestly depends. It's probably because also, you know, there's a bias to, towards the, the original one. Probably. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I, I'm i interested. It's Higurashi's Higura, fun. It is yes. weird, it's wacky, and mm. it is fun. I will say to... this, though. I was very sad once the police officer uh, shows up. And his car, and I just look at that car. I post a screenshot on it in, oh, in Discord yeah. as well. And it's just like, you look at that CG car, and I'm like, is, I'm sorry, is this the early 2000s? Like, fucking, what is looks, that car? Yeah, it looks like a PS1. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, game. holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But again, this is, uh, that's why I'm like, I am conf- I am conflicted on it because I do really like Dean Sigurashi. I know visual novel fans, you can come and hang me, but I do actually really enjoy Dean's adaptation. So, this one is a little bit... I'm a little bit mixed. I'm enjoying it. I'm not enjoying the art very much. I'm not enjoying the studio. But, you know, it's... They also changed the opening, which is... A, I'm a little... I'm also a little bit conflicted on, because the opening visuals for this one is also really good. Whoever, whoever like, did the visuals and editing for that, I, I commend you. You did a good job. You, you seem to know what you're doing. Whoever they... Like who? I'm sorry, who is doing the opening? Uh, Asaka, yeah, I believe what you said by Asaka. Um, that song is awful. <laughs> Holy shit, that song is terrible. 
I, I really wish they wouldn't have done that. So, you know, it's... But that's pretty much, so far, that's been my... Uh, my experience with Higurashi is like, there are parts of it that I really like, and then there are parts of it that I'm like, why? Why is this? Why Why would you do this? Why would you give this to Pashon? Why would you give this to somebody better? <laughs> but I know why, because it's just supposed to be some cheap advertising for the gacha game. Yeah, so, you know. which you'll definitely... I'd say... <laughs> and I hate myself for it. <laughs> yeah, I just want to. I just want to see what the fuck that you're doing. A Higurashi gacha game. <laughs> They're gonna be idols, and you know it. <laughs> oh my uh, god! Also, even, do all, do even do main work? character. This main character yeah. will okay. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, tech, technically, uh, I, I, that's not even. For those that are uh, those, I know people didn't like that uh, Rika kind of got shafted in the original for not having as much screen time as she did, or as she should have. Those who had that problem with the original, you'll probably be more happy here because Rika is way more center focused. They kind of quickly established the fact that she is very important as opposed to the original, which she kind of just <laughs> becomes very important, I guess, to not spoil anything. Yeah. She keeps getting get, <laughs> keeps getting killed until season three when they're like, okay, fine, look. This is this is why. It's like, oh, I see. Thank you for letting me know after seven <laughs> years. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, I understand. This is why everybody likes her. Nipa. Although, another thing that I find very funny, right? Because they, uh, as far as I'm aware, at least for most of them, if not all of them, they have the original voice actors who are reprising their, for reprising their roles. And it is so goddamn funny. Especially uh, Keiichi's voice. Because he is... Um, he is not. Uh, he's not as young as he used to be. <laughs> uh, so that is a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's the. Yeah, it is the same guy. Just making making sure he's not. He's, he doesn't do. He doesn't do his own voice uh, as well anymore. Like some of them can do a pretty good job, but it, you do. You can tell that the voice actors got got older. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. I think I think they I think they nailed the performance a little bit better first time around, but that's. I guess that's to be uh, to be expected when you get the same people in like about many many years later. Unlike anime, we actually grow older in real life. Ah, well, yeah. Kind of, you kind of wish a couple of those would actually uh, follow suit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, but you know, again, it's a it's a decently fun show. I feel like that's I've said that for like all the shows I've been reviewing now. It's decent. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, nothing's it's, hitting it out of the park lately. That's for sure. Seems that way, anyways. Yeah, I wasn't super into this season. Like, even Haikyuu. Like, I like Haikyuu. I like Haikyuu a lot. But I, I'm, I've been telling myself that I should start a later season. But I'm just sitting there and I'm like, eh, maybe later. <laughs> maybe when I can binge it. I don't know. We'll see. Right. End up with me if I can find it, like but... 40 minutes aside, I can watch a couple episodes. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then, then, <clears throat> I, then I end up playing Apex with Haikyuu and then. Suddenly it's like 2 in the morning, and I'm like, yeah, I should probably go to bed. Mm, yeah, no anime today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do my last show. We can get to our probably short uh, retro review on this day. Let's I would assume so. Yeah, I mean, I assume so. So, last one I'm doing is Assault Lily Bouquet. I will call it Bouquet, because it doesn't deserve uh, correct pronunciation. Yes, I think this anime is quite bad. Uh, no the reason why shit. I picked yeah, no shit. The reason why I picked it is by Studio Shaft. So I gave it the benefit of the doubt for possibly being at the very least entertaining. And it's always funny, at least, uh, to watch something that I'm not normally going to watch uh on a well I don't want to say whim, but anyways. What is the word the the difficult word for this? Cool. Yeah, does, doesn't matter. <laughs> on the verge of extinction by the alien entity known as Huge the fucking kaiju that we haven't seen uh yeah not really huge yeah the planet unites to develop charm c-h-a-r-m merging science and magic into a weapon military facilities called gardens not to be confused with uh final fantasy 8 quickly sprout up to train recruits in this nascent technology Forged by nature and training, teenage girls emerge as a heroic lily upon blossoming. Uh, lily is what they call uh, these 
Soldiers, can humanity survive long enough for these lilies to bloom and save us all? So, our main character is this pink-haired girl. She's very ganky. Uh, she tells us she got in off the wait list to this academy. And these charms are just big swords, basically, that can transform. They're called charms. Um... It's all about cute girls basically talking to each other the whole time. There's some fight scenes. Not really all that interesting. Doesn't seem all that an uh, well animated either for what they're doing. There's a lot of environmental effects, which is nice. But the crux of the anime comes down to the girls talking to each other, doing over-exaggerated over cute things that uh, that fan base would totally be into, and very provocative sexualized screenshots Always in your face. And the anime makes very sure you see these parts. Whether the girls are taking foot baths. Really focus in on the feet there. Uh, wearing their made uh, school outfits. That's probably too high. So, you know, not quite at the ass crack. But we're getting there. And uh, the, the forbidden zone above the thigh situation. So... Any sort of angle and piece of ass you want to look at this anime, make sure to uh, really focus in on all that. Uh, yeah, but we, it's not fun. It Strike is Witches not. Does, the, does that, but it's it's fun at least. Yeah, this this doesn't even seem fun. It's just oh, okay. I guess we're 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 putting the camera there now. I guess okay. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like it was made to promote a gacha game. Yes. Yeah, this one right. too. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I saw the, was it? I think it's Bushiroad. It's a Bushiroad. Oh, the owners of New gacha Japan game. and Stardom, great. <laughs> yeah, it's a Bushiroad gacha game because I remember be, uh, watching the live stream where they they showed the gameplay. Yeah, yeah. all right. So two two wrestling promotions I follow uh, do this one, great. Bushiroad is just dominating Japan. Yeah, they're they're a big then company. It's like it's between Bushiroad and Bandai and Sony. So like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like trifecta. I guess I'll just get a Mitsubishi and just hope that uh, the bank they have is just do a better <laughs> job. Yeah, uh, why it's an only all-girls academy, don't know. They don't tell us. Why they have to be women that are developed, don't know. They don't tell us. Uh, why something needs to be connected to a weapon, uh, how you have magic within you. Don't know. Don't tell us. Uh, I see a pattern here. Uh, it's the magic of Yuri, JD. What do you mean? Yeah, uh, there is a there is a Yuri like character. Uh, there are uh, a couple of them actually, and whoa, they uh, there's a scene where um, our pink haired girl get, goes into the bathroom, and uh, Endo, uh, another named character, she just straights up like presses her against against the counter of the bathroom, puts her knee right in her right in her vagina area. Gets real, real damn close to her. puts her puts her thumb like on the bottom of her lip, and she's she gets real close to her, and she's like, "You best be careful, or I might steal you away." And they get awkwardly close, and then there's that. It zooms in on the lips, like I yeah. This this. I don't know what you're talking about, Jerry. This uh, this anime sounds amazing. It's yeah, uh, but it, <laughs> at like, least that's all this is. That's all this comes across at, as. Yeah, there's at least been known that when Chef pulls those kind of things, it's usually because they need money for a good project. So just just pay attention in the future. They might come up with some kind of movie, do some interesting movie or series. Yeah, it's usually how they like. Usually when they do that, those weird ass promotions. There's like. Why the fuck would you do that? It's like they paid us a lot of money. And we need a lot of money to do fucking Evangelion. <laughs> because no one will buy fucking Evangelion stuff. So we need the money to do those kind of projects. And they end up getting those weird as gacha game promotions. So after that they usually, usually, I hope so. They will, uh, they will either one, don't close. Because you know it's shaft. <laughs> They might just go bankrupt anytime. Sure. Or two, sure. do a good project or a fun project because they, they won't sell it so well. So they need a, a, the, the backing for it. Yeah, this is your make money project uh, to appeal to, uh, you know, a very specific audience that will spend money on these kind of things. 
Uh, it is definitely not for me. I find it quite terrible. Uh, the deepest thing the show is doing that has any sort of interesting plot line to it is a, uh, a character in which saved our pink-haired girl when she was really young. She had a uh, partner. Uh, there's random German words thrown in here like uh, 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 Schutzengel, which is guardian angel in German. They do directly translate this to guardian angel where you make a pact with an upperclassman uh, to become a, a duo. Um, so, uh, they, they, they hint that this, uh, they, this girl probably, uh, encountered a battle with her, with her Schutzengel and, uh, probably died. And now she's shut out her heart and, uh, to, to others. She's kind of has a broken personality to it. She's uber, uber hard, hard shelled about it all. Uh, and then when she's alone in her dorm room, she uh, it implies that she is she's kind of gone crazy into uh, creating her her old teammate as a split personality where she kind of hallucinates her talking to her. Uh, perhaps it's also um, her spirit or or magic had uh, had like I guess combined into her charm and that's why she's using the charm to still feel a connection. That's the deepest thing the show has, but uh, this show's not about that. That's only like a little side thing to it all. It's definitely not as important as the the women just doing cute girl things uh with weapons occasionally. Uh, it's it's a cash grab. It's very sexualized. Not my thing. It's a it's a hard drop. Won't be continuing it and I don't recommend it to uh to mu- too many. I, w- I would not. It would not be the first thing I would recommend from this season. That's for sure. Ten out of ten. Literally perfect. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. no. I won't be playing that gacha game. <laughs> you won't. What you, I won't. What do you mean? Because I saw the, like every the gotcha live stream. Game. I saw the live stream. I wasn't interested. There's also the ah. the Sakura Wars one coming out. So you just focus on that one. <laughs> It's I rest, Wars. My, ca- Wars I rest my case. Look, look, Sakura, it's Sakura Wars. Sakura Tyson is fun. I don't know what to talk about. Although I don't have a PS4 to play the newest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. How's the How's the Space Fisher uh, fucking uh, gotcha game? <laughs> oh but yeah, that one. That one was <laughs> that one was fun. It was so ridiculous. Oh my god, I love that. I love that game. Unfortunately, it's just for trial. Just do for trial. Don't stick around. <laughs> that one was fun. <laughs> that was so wacky. Oh man! I still have the strike, which is one as well. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Space fish. How do you remember that one? Out of out of every single gacha game I, I tried this year, the, the, the fucking fishing one. Probably because I tried watching that anime. God fucking damn! Oh that yeah, was that one is dead. You <laughs> still. <laughs> Uh. All right, guys. Let's play this drop, and we can get to our our final review. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Uh, Midnight submarine. Midnight submarine was the drop. For those wondering, you yeah. you're welcome, Tori. I know you requested every episode just for you this one time on such on such a day. Make Thankfully, sure I can't you. hear it. I know you're just gonna have to play it on YouTube, just on your own. That you, I know you always do. Ah, yes, of course. Yes, I have my own playlist of, of a ten-hour version of it. <laughs> you have your own playlist of various uh, Rashomon soundtracks. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we're doing Pet Shop of Horrors, kind of a late, uh, late little Halloween episode. The show came out in winter 1999. Uh, it aired originally uh, March 2nd, 99 to March 23rd. So that is a uh, very late winter, basically spring. It consists of four episodes, 22 minutes each. Might as well be an OVA at this point. Regardless, I got the summary right here from Anime Planet. It is by Studio Madhouse. Uh, directed by Toshio Harata. Whom has also done... Various, like, small side projects. He was key animator on Metropolis. Uh, He was director of Kappa no Sanpei. If you've heard of that. Um, Yeah, yeah, totally. Definitely. A lot of of kids shows from back in the day. He was director of Hinotori Yamato Hen. So that's something. 
So he he tends to do a lot of uh, that. Uh, oh, what was that? Rintaro. He did type storyboard stuff? for Eguchi Sashi. Interesting. Uh, that is a very very uh, no. mm, Some questionable. That's what I'm thinking. Very of. Questionable show. Yeah. Um, Rintaro was the producer fun. of a lot of these, so. Uh, there's a little history there, but again, the summary is at Count D's pet shop. <laughs> County's pets, am I right? <laughs> ah, jokes. County's nuts. Uh-huh. County's nuts. <laughs> you can acquire any form of animal from an, an ordinary canary to more exotic creatures. Hmm. Made to sign a contract before purchase, because this man is is uh, he he's not above breaking the law, if you know what I mean. Count D claims no responsibility for actions incurred if the purchaser does not follow its instructions completely as results can be fatal. Follow that contract, motherfucker, or you're gonna die. Patrons of the shop are able to get the rarest of creatures, but often their purchases are coupled with demons from their past that won't go away easily. And the shortest version I can I can explain all four episodes is a person that has been connected to someone uh, family orient or uh, uh, family related has died, and they can't handle the death. So they they come across Count D's shop, and he goes, Ah, just so happens I have a pet that resembles a human of the person you lost. Please. Take this home, but I warn you, if you don't follow this contract completely, not in any wordage I will use, but you will die. And I don't care if you die, so here's the pet. By the way, uh, if you break any of these one things, uh, you are sure to meet your doom in a horrible, horrible way. Sign here. And the person always goes, ah, give me that shit. I'm signing immediately. I'm taking this home. What is this? It is a rabbit. It is a mermaid. It is a, um, uh, what were the other two? God Emperor. Uh, uh, God, God yeah, Emperor, Kieran. Yes. That was the first one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the fourth Kieran. one. A, Kira, a straight up Kieran. <laughs> uh, that was the exception. Uh, the fourth one was, yeah. um, I, I think loved the most one. I loved one. I loved one. The President of the United <laughs> yeah. States. <laughs> you're, yeah, right. you're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When was the other one? Mermaid, rabbit. Uh, what, uh, it was, was the, the Medusa, oh, the fucking one. salamander. The Medusa, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the yeah, Medusa. Yeah, 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 yeah. The salamander, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, so. we paid attention. We know these things. God, it's, How it's, did he's... he die? He looked at the lizard face. He's like, what? What do you mean? It's oh, Medusa. Man. It's fucking what Medusa, mean? What do you of mean? course. The little thing. Come on, it's the little fucking lizard thing. It's not Medusa. Well, it's always funny it as it said as, it was. as its if base. Had, yeah, no. If at I its had base, you... it's always an it's always a straight up animal. So, I'm selling you a rabbit, but it looks like our daughter. I assure you, it's a rabbit. <laughs> Listen, this is a premium rabbit. It's it's the, the only premium one of rabbit. its kind. An only <laughs> rabbit of its kind. Uh, it's almost getting extinct. By the way, it can multiply like crazy. It's like, well, shit, that is some stupid <laughs> rabbit, then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it is kind of hard to multiply when you're the only one. <laughs> well, shit, they they did it. Oh, damn. Uh, but uh, if I was to describe the show in a few words, it would be confusion. <laughs> I was just confused most of the time. Sort of, yeah. It, all all on just... the side... All on the side of this spooky horror shit kind of uncomfortableness going on, there's a wacky, like, 80s detective that's okay. convinced that these weird unsolved deaths uh, via animal attacks it, uh, is connected to the pet shop. He does find the connection. He knows that all these people are dying from the pets purchased from this dude. And he's all frustrated at work because <laughs> they're just like, we need a warrant. And he goes, I have the connection. They go, that's not good enough. We need more proof. And he can never get any of it because this dude has, uh, uh, Count D always has a straight up legal contract that we, and it always says this at the end, uh, uh, we take no responsibility if this contract is broken because you were warned of the ramifications of owning this pet. 
never you mind that uh, <laughs> the connection of all these deaths are to this dude and his exotic animals. But because, like, none of these animals really exist, no charges can actually be filed because there's no law to these these animals. It's, it's almost like um, bringing in a Komodo dragon to, I don't know, uh, North Carolina. There's no law for specifically... I'm just th- spitballing here. It, it might be, it might not be, well, but there's I mean, no law specifically want, in North Carolina to... to own a Komodo dragon. So if you die via the Komodo dragon, they can't... Do they you can't want me to arrest the, the the legalities of his training. No, 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 you, you, no, it's okay. He cannot. He wouldn't be able to be responsible anyway. We can we can put it as dogs. I sell dogs. My dogs are very aggressive, and I say, hey, look, I breed these dogs to be aggressive and to defend property. Please do not treat this like a little chihuahua. And but unfortunately, people are retarded and they treat it like a fucking chihuahua, and I end up with a bunch of cases of my, of the dogs I created uh, chewing people's face off. <laughs> that happens. I cannot be responsible because I warned them. I sold you. That's your property now. Do not try to smooch it in the face because it's gonna rip it off. <laughs> It's an attack dog. Well, there you go. It's, there you go. That's very, that's very, very good explanation. Kill all the people who are invading your property. Please Listen. do not. Please do not get close to it as well. And if people do, that's their fault. It's not mine. Uh, that's basically the contract he has. Is like, look, this is an exotic animal. Don't do this, this, and that. Please, please, for the love of God. Of course, people are retards, and they think rabbits look like little girls and shit. It's confusion, uh, but uh, uh, technically for the, le- the legalities of it, unless the Japan has a law against uh, exotic animals being brought in the camp. Probably does. Uh, the, the, the country, which they probably have, for example, you don't, you cannot import No, this takes place in dragon. America, doesn't it? No, it's, no, on, it it's on Japan. It's in Japan. No, no, don't ask me why the president of, um, soon to be president of the United States was just Fucking swinging by Japan. Because no, it his did not, dude, this did not his, take place in the U.S. His dude found a a diary of the the other president who said, "I was after World War II, I was fighting in Japan." Uh, and, oh, and, I see. Uh, yeah, that I was fighting sense. in the Pacific. Then I went to Japan. I found this the guy in. Yeah, see, the timeline is a little bit wacky because they went to Japan and then they brought home home and then they're just in the car again with the fucking uh, kid and then it's like they're apparently in the U.S. again. It's just like wait, uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a big time lapse there. Whatever. <laughs> so, no all right. Biggie. Confusion. Confusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, fucking the US is just like five minutes west. It's all right. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, this isn't animated very well at all. The character art is very reminiscent of kind of that kind of that late eighties, early nineties. Uh, it's by Madhouse, so I didn't expect much, to be honest. Uh via the artistic element to it all. The I watched this in English dub on YouTube. That's where I was able oh to find it. God. Uh, needless to say, the dub is not great. <laughs> in fact, it's exactly what I expected coming out of a dub in 1999. <laughs> uh, yeah, this. Uh, okay. the, I didn't hate this anime, but it was definitely just kind of weird and slow and not very interesting. The most interesting part was I'm like, okay, how are they going to fuck this up? <laughs> like that that don't was it. Her, don't hand her cookies, don't hand her cookies, don't hand her cookies. She wants some cookies. Just one. What harm could it do? Mm, I, I don't know. Let's find yeah. out. Let's yeah, find whatever. out. Why did you give her a cookie? Just, you told me to <laughs> I just love the fact that it's like fucking the county at the end every time and it's just like, oh sorry, I heard that they passed away and he just fucking smiles like hmm. Might as well really? be stroking mm. Mr. Bigglesworth. He's like, hmm, <laughs> evil ha- happened. You don't say. I am not responsible for any of these. Here's well, my contract, help- officer. Can't you help me out? Can't you help me out? Can't you give me some hints? Can't you help me out for solving this case? I can't. I'm not a liability to say anything. Here's a shortcake. Okay. I see you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, bribery with sweets. That'll win me every time. And then that actually becomes a thing every episode. All right, here you yep. go, Count D. And he's like, ah, ha, ha, chocolates. <laughs> I, 
I will reveal I, I mean, everything. <laughs> I figured it was going to be something like this the moment I looked at it, and I'm just like, all right, let's see. Patch up of horrors, huh? 7.27 of Mal. Hmm? Horror, yeah, Jose. Okay. I, I, I've seen it off. Okay. okay, I see. <laughs> I understand everything now. Yeah, I understand yeah. what this is. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't age well. Jose, as a genre, didn't age well. Yeah. It has. Yes. Uh, mm. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's got a bit of. It's got a little bit of a weird thing. Like, I mean, mostly what I uh, associate with Jose is just the kind of like older, pretty boys, essentially. Uh, but it's kind of kind of got a little bit of that that like androgynous look to County, for example, and then the, the rest of it is just like very much like idyllic, like like the fucking fourth episode with the with the like uh, fucking chick was like, oh, I all I want, I don't want to be the first lady. I just want a nice little family with birds and dogs and kids. And it's like, God. Uh, yeah, okay. Sure. <laughs> no ambition or anything. We're just going for straight feelings there. I I see. Of course. Oh no. I'm looking at the I want end. all I wanted in life was to make you happy. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking it's 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 not my thing. It's not my thing at all. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, no. I don't know. For something that is called Pet Shop of Horrors, I guess horror is not actual horror. Horrors it's just, is the, it's just the, the animals. Kind of a <laughs> freak show, I guess. Pet, yeah. pet Shop of Freaks? Oh, yeah, I guess. Freak, freak animals and I guess drugs because people are hallucinating and see shit. I mean, the first girl was literally died because of a drug overdose. So yeah. Dude, she was hopped <laughs> yeah. up on opium. I love the fact that uh, that was the only one with a super mor- morality to it all. Where, yeah. uh, you know, uh, th- this is the, this is the uh, the parents he sells the rabbit to that looks like their uh, dead daughter uh, in their minds because they're probably hopped up on opium themselves. And, um, the, you know, the contracts that don't give them anything other than vegetables. And, of course, they give it chocolates because the rabbit asked for more. Don't ask. Uh, anyways, the, <laughs> Count D goes, the the uh, the father gets eaten by a, a bunch of rabbits. And the woman's, like, surrounded by them with a butcher knife. She's like, oh, what? You, I only gave him one chocolate. And she goes, and Count D goes, the morality. So your daughter was a was addicted to opium. And you had the chance to save her. And then it, show, it cuts to... Uh, the daughter in the hospital bed begging for some more opium and the mom's just like, okay, here's here's some more. <laughs> she was a spoiled girl. <laughs> I always spoil my kids with with hard opium. drugs. <laughs> That's right. Listen, man. I mean, it's if your kid looked at you, JD, and asked, can I have some more drugs? Would you really have the heart to say no? Ah, uh, you know what, Tori? I you know, I have I really have a soft spot for gi- giving children cocaine. You might be onto something there. It's a good, it's a weakness Listen, I have. Fine, fine, but just this once. This is the last time. We're yeah. almost out Here, of, out of cocaine, and cocaine is expensive. Here's so your please. powdered donut, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, I mean it is interesting. Love is a drug, and just like every single drug, it can kill. It's like right. oh, I see, and then you go for like. Yeah, no, I, I sold him a fish that ate his wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. I guess the... What is the moral of this shit? The moral is, don't buy weird fish. Yeah, <laughs> don't buy weird sure. fish. Don't cheat on your wife that he committed suicide. Ah. You just... Yeah, it's like, oh, let me hug this woman. Unfortunately, I had sex with her before, but like, before I got married, even... Let me just hug her. Look, don't and tell. The wife look, just don't, like, I don't see. hug. You don't hug, hug you her. Hug another, yeah, you I, hug I just love. Stop, I'm, stop. Gonna, I'm gonna just kill myself. I was like, oh, you know, that is reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> reasonable. Don't Have a good hug day. the woman you used to love. Say, I will only ever love you, and then the the woman you're to marry listens. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, do it when she can't hear. Yeah, exactly. Do it. Do it in private, not you know on a boat out at sea at the wedding. I just still, I I agree with it. I just love that her reaction is like, wait, 
You love somebody else other than me? Yeah, I guess I'll die then. I guess I'll commit suicide. <laughs> Out into the know, ocean right? I go. <laughs> it's like, sure, that was not, like, no hesitation there. All right. Fantastic. I mean, I, I feel like there's a better way to go about this, but you know what? Sure. Yeah, at least murder him. him. Well, yeah. <laughs> Take him with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> but nah, it was just like, and that's what I mean. It's Joe saying, it's like, it's so, eh. Uh, no one, the, no one does this. <laughs> the last episode made me laugh the most, though. Where yes, yeah, it's it's the it's uh the president of the United States, the the retainer. Where it, t- talk about a messed up origin story of the of the side character of it all. I will make yeah. this guy the president of the United States, no matter what. His dream is my dream. By the way, I love you. That's the president's actual wife. Yeah. Uh, or she wants a family. That's what she wants. But um, his origin story was his mom was like a drunk, what spent all the money on alcohol all the time, and then the really? a, a media team and this kid bust into the apartment. You win a scholarship grant. How does this feel? And he's like, "Oh, my life is saved." <laughs> what happened to the mom? Yeah. Ah, forget it. We don't. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, I mean, who who actually cares? No, but like. I just love the fact that it's like you're sitting there and a fucking Chad over here is just like, ah, oh, he's got it all, cheats on his wife, everything. He is just not interested in anything. And then this girl coming in to his retainer is like, oh, you poor thing, you're being used by him. And it just fucking turns mustache towards like, he, I am not being used. I am using him. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, that, right. that took a turn. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't see how I don't see the logic behind this, but sure, no. you keep telling yourself that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, so they go to the pet shop. They buy a Kirin that's just like this Chinese girl, or or a yeah, I like geisha that girl like, or whatever oh, you want. I have him. yeah, I'm gonna sell you a Kirin. I was like, a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, yeah. I was like, why, why, why a giraffe? I mean, I, of course, I have the the Revu Starlight flashbacks of that fucking giraffe <laughs> being fucking god and talking to me. It, it was really weird. And sorry, I can't get to show you Revu Starlight is a very very good show that everyone should watch. But aside that, I was like, why why a, why a giraffe? What what does a mythical creature of a giraffe it is? And it's actually kidding with a Q. <laughs> I was like, right. oh, I see. It's a, a Chinese legend dragon thing. Right. Oh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I was a little bit confused, actually. <laughs> they, they showed the girl. I was like, why does... Even when they showed the girl, I was like, how does that... How does that relate to a giraffe? I don't understand. I was like, oh, no, wait. That's not kidding for giraffe in Japanese. It's a mythical... I see, a mythical creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it goes through the whole history of how a Kirin has impacted, you know, world leaders and whatnot. But I love the initial reaction of the of the uh, the uh, government official where he goes, "Oh, I see what this is. You're in the child trafficking ring. Get your sick hobbies out of here. I'll be calling the police." No, sir. But wait. But what if? You take her. <laughs> he goes, oh, okay, I guess I'll humor you. <laughs> I, I love the fact that it literally just cuts to them in the car, so I was like, oh, yes, I took the child. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't going to look very good, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Runaway bus. They crash off the cliff trying to stop the bus, and then the Karen is like, my retainer, what is your wish? Because the Karen grants a wish of their chosen one. I wish for him to be president. But no. Actually, that's not what I wanted, even though that's what I said many times over. I want the woman to be happy. That's it. And, it re- and it, of course, he just, uh, well, not of course, but um, it cuts to him in the hospital. His body has actually died. His his entity spirit is now the dude who will be president. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm him now. Cool. Yeah. I that's will like- be president, <laughs> and I will grant yeah. you a family. Please, Kitty, make him a pre- make him the president of the United States. No, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, leave your own dreams. Goodbye. I was like, yo, that is a that is a dick move. Holy shit, it's a deep cut. I mean, yeah. let's be real though. They when they went through the backstory of what the uh, the Kitty does for people, they, they pretty much was just dick moves. 
<laughs> I wanted to save my country. So you got absolutely royally fucked. Right. <laughs> they were all they all end horribly. <laughs> It's like the it's like the wish of wish from a genie where it never ends well or from a, a witch or what, whatever. Uh, the purpose just always ended with a person dying. So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, they did say it, it has to be uh, uh, the a- the action of getting the wish has to be play- paid for in human blood. And apparently, saving an entire country and making the woman you love happy is requires the same sacrifice. The more you know. <laughs> yeah, right. It requires yeah. L- just less blood, I guess. It's just one person, not yeah. Hir- not Hiroshima. <laughs> as they as they uh, as they mentioned. My least favorite was easily the the mermaid episode. That's the one where the 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 singer woman commits suicide and a fish eats her and I didn't like that one at all. Oh, it was yeah. just too much of that yeah. stupid song and singing and the mermaid and you're just like, "All right, let's get to the point where the mermaid eats him. Come on." <laughs> Takes forever. Some th- some things you never forget, just like the taste of uh, human flesh. <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, we've we've all been there. I mean, I've I've eaten my fair share of humans. Okay, good to know. Yeah, cannibalism well, that's a normal thing, Tori. Come on, I am I am an American. After some place, all. some some parts in the world, yes. Yeah, Americans. The civilized world, no. I, hey, I never said Americans were civilized. I no, neither did I. <laughs> I thought we were talking about German, but that's okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Listen, Germans don't eat people. First and foremost, they've only <laughs> eaten people a couple of times, and yeah. that was a big media thing. Right? <laughs> they made a big deal about it. <laughs> they did. Oh yeah, that is true. The 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 guys who made the was were they German? The guys who made the the contract about uh, the homicide and eating the flesh of each other. I think they were German. They probably were. Oh, I know. There was one who uh, contacted somebody on a forum, and they asked to uh, yeah asked, asked them to eat him. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I, I studied. I studied that case in in law school. Oh, oh wow. you did? How about that? Don't you? Yeah, <laughs> the legality you, uh, of eating someone. <laughs> no, it's about uh, uh, the boundaries of uh, private interests and contracts. Yeah, because yeah, technically, it's, it. technically, it's not illegal to say. Like, if I kill myself and then you eat the flesh. It's not technically illegal. I could put that in a contract, but then the people are like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't go there. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. basically that. That's, that is basically this case. Of course, in that in that case, particularly the the, the guy killed the other. Uh, yeah, it was like you shouldn't put in in a contract that it's okay to kill that person because they signed the contract saying uh, telling me I could kill them. Uh, yeah. Because for some reason that wasn't illegal in German question mark i didn't understand very well, well that part but they you yeah, know no, what? they weren't sure about that either because that was like the big point of that the entire thing's like is it legal because i mean the- technically speaking he it didn't is. give him permission to do this but In it's a like contract yeah it's but like, it's like it's, is it then it's like the question is like it's not morally right so it's like should that matter at all uh yeah. It's a good question like, to ask, right? Uh, what, contracts, what, what contracts is that line of morality have, to legality, right? However, in present-day Germany... Contracts have illegal things as yeah. uh, the, the object. Basically. Yeah, in, in present-day Germany, that is hard illegal. You cannot do that anymore. Oh, you're telling me I can't eat somebody uh, even though there's a viable contract? Yep. You think? Uh, come on, I was you taking what I was learning can. here watching Pet Shop of Horror. Not in Germany. You actually can. Uh, Not in Germany. In, in depending, I think in the U.S. you can. Oh, so well, like there you disposable, go. Disposable parts of human body, uh, you can legally acquire and do whatever the fuck you want with that. I can, I can legally well. acquire someone's liver and eat it. Get some, if, get some actual li- human liver and onions going. I don't think, I don't think you can because again, it's not uh, disposable. Damn it. You actually need a surgery, but for, for example, you can actually get like umbilical cords and placentas and eat it if you want. Yeah. To. yeah. Uh, and I'm not even joking. That is legal to acquire. Uh, if someone has a child and wants to sell the placenta, usually they don't. Usually they they give it to the hospital because they can uh, take Dis- off some dispose of it. Some no no. Th- usually they stem cells. They can get some nutrients and and cells from it. So usually they they get the the placenta from it. I see. Uh, if you if you need something later in the Later in your life, if you if you have some kind of cancer, why not? If you, the the your, technically the placenta who was you who was attached to you at some point is still preserved, then they can get a few cells or uh, genetic code, and why not you 
actually do some oh. treatment with you. Uh, so, but you can technically, yes, uh, acquire parts of human body and need it as long as it's disposable. We've uh, we're learning a lot on this episode today. <laughs> I was about to say, Jeff, point me to another anime podcast that talks of, talks about the legality of eating somebody else. <laughs> I'm sure there aren't too many of those around. <laughs> hey, learning Korean and learning <laughs> human flesh eating tactics. All right. No, nah, just illegal <laughs> legality behind it. <laughs> Love it. So, uh, yeah, patch up of whores. Not to be confused with the porn, I'm sure. I'm sure that's a thing. In fact, I'm going to Google that. Is. I'm going to Google that right now. Patch up of whores? Yes. I, I fucking watched that last week. Pet <laughs> shop of <laughs> whores. Porn. Pet shop of whores porn. And then fucking JD moms comes in. I'm going to use your PC. And that's the fucking... Uh, oh, no. I, I well, know. They even, be- they even better name Porn Shop of Horrors. <laughs> there, there is not a pet shop of whores, but there is a little shop of whores. Is it an actual shop, though? Uh, it is on. <laughs> it is on Pornhub. Uh, wow. It came out in 1987. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. And it's uh, and late. it's from Germany. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, Revat Leva- That is not German, actually. That is. Uh, I don't know what language. Austrian. Then. <laughs> maybe Swiss. Uh, maybe like Germanish. Let's see what. Let's see what language this uh, translates to, because that is definitely. I. I yeah, thought it was I, also, I think my least my least favorite that, episode was God, also the, the porn is plain. <laughs> it, it is definitely eighties. Woo, that is some permed hair. <laughs> okay, we're not what watching the, porn what right the, now. What other podcast would just talk about anime legalities of eating people with eighties Austrian porn? <laughs> Google Translate page, please. Oh, yeah, I think my favorite one was the Medusa. I think that it's one Dutch. Was just interesting. I it was. Oh. It was not Dutch. No, detection Belgian? language. No, it shouldn't Belgian Finnish. Belgian looks like. No, okay. It is a Finnish porn. <laughs> oh my god, Finland! I'm fapping to you. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> can you legally say that as in Norway? <laughs> of course I can. So if you're so if you're wondering out there, Little Shop of Horrors is a Finnish anime from 1980 or Finnish porn from 1987. Oh boy. Okay, I think we've, I think we've discussed Should this enough. Should not be confused with the Pet Shop of Horrors. Uh, as you can see by the ending of this episode, Pet Shop of Horrors is not that interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I, I give it a six. I uh, give it a favorite, five. My favorite, my favorite episode is the Medusa one. I think it was the most interesting. The least one is the Mermaid. It's just too way too drag. I think it was yeah. an extremely dumb situation to begin with. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, the yeah the interesting uh, the, ex, but, uh, the ex 80s actor that fell in love with his Medusa, that's actually a lizard, uh, a rare lizard that has the power of Medusa type shit turns him to stone. If you look in the eyes, contract says don't look in the eyes. Of course, that's what he does. Dies. The lizard dies with him because the lizard was yeah, also in love. Together. Yep. All right. So yeah. yeah. Uh, so six five then and then of course to. Uh, Keep keep the stair, uh, staircase going down. I'm I'm giving it a four. All right, there we and, go. Uh, because Average I did not five. like this. My favorite episode is definitely episode four because God damn it, that shit is funny as hell. <laughs> and, uh, the least president. episode, yeah. Uh, least <laughs> favorite episode, the definitely episode of the two. United States. Yep. No, fuck you. <laughs> like, Holy shit! I will I'm... make you into another man. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, but with a bigger dick. <laughs> 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 Probably. I don't know. I haven't checked. Oh my god. That, the, the parody that everyone, could come out of this would be really everyone funny. wishes. Ooh. <laughs> I am a magical giraffe. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you listen. You get to bang his wife. There's, no, there's nothing bad about this. <laughs> Just accept it. <laughs> <laughs> I want... I want this woman to be happy. All right, I will give you a more handsome body, a bigger dick. You get to have sex with the hot woman, and you will be president. That's not what I wanted at all. (laughs) Too bad. bad. Fuck you. (laughs) Magical giraffe. Oh, I need to ascend to this (laughs) guy. 
I want that fucking scene again now, but I wanted edit it to be the goddamn giraffe from uh, <laughs> Review Starlight. Oh my god, I'm tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh <clears throat> all right uh let's get out of here <laughs> <laughs> so anyways yeah patch up a horrors it's a pretty good comedy you should watch <laughs> <laughs> this has been episode uh, what is this 80 87 uh i hope you guys enjoyed. yeah yeah see you next time <laughs> peace <Yeah. laughs> goodbye